was just over two hours ago that Nick Saban, now the head coach at the University of Alabama, returned to Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. It was just over 40 minutes ago that Nick Saban took the field as the head coach of the top-ranked team in the country. He got a slightly hostile reaction. Saban is back. There's a little story that's been brewing down here in the bayou for a while now. It's a drama about two coaches and their path to and from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. A few years back, Nick Saban, he done blew through here. All he did was resurrect the program by winning a national title. But then he got up and left us without even saying goodbye. He was replaced by a Midwesterner with an unknown pedigree. Les Miles was his name. He was a straight shooting cowboy, not a tiger. And not much after Miles settled in, old Saban, well, he broke our hearts again. Came back to the SEC to coach our biggest rival, the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Show sure was interesting last year. Oh, man. It was the first time they met on the gridiron. Miles earned his stripes in that one and made us even happier when the Tigers went on and won the whole shooting match. National champs again. This year? Well, it's a little bit different. Coach Nick is coming home for the first time to Tiger Stadium. Uninvited, undefeated, and unbelievable number one in the country. So what better place than the Bayou for an unfriendly reunion? We all ready for another chapter to be written. But I'm sure this story, far from it. Danielson and Tracy Wolfson. LSU is known for the excellence of its football teams and the passion of its fans. For the past couple of years, that passion, that anger, has been focused on one man, Nick Saban, almost to the exclusion of any other. There's a psychological theory that anger is fueled by fear. If that is true, LSU fanatic fans have had their worst fears realized. Nick Saban is back as the coach of a dreaded rival, and Nick Saban is here coaching the top-ranked team in the country. Nick Saban is with Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, Vern. Coach, your return has been talked about all week, but now that you've stepped on the field and you've greeted your former players, senior friends, how emotional is it for you? Well, hey, this is all about what happens on the field. Nothing else matters. It matters what our players do, the intensity they play with, the toughness, and how we execute. That's what we've been focused on all week, and that's what we got to do today. You talk about what happens on the field. What do you need to do to keep this win? Well, I think the line of scrimmage is going to be critical in this game. You know, for us, we got to the line of scrimmage on both sides, not give up big plays and make some big plays. Thanks a lot, Coach, for your time. Good luck. 
All right, Tracy, thank you. Gary Danielson? You can taste it, can yeah. <laughs> How long does his reappearance have relevance in this game? I think it's big. I mean, I really do. I mean, there's a lot of things going LSU's way. I mean, an undefeated team, home game, two losses, it sticks with them. But their, their coach has got the number one team. I mean, that has to get you excited. I, I think this is going to fuel everything, almost everything, is going LSU's way. On the field, what's the dominant factor? I think this is grown man football. These two teams will try to impose their will, just like Nick Saban told Tracy. Both coaching staffs love the matchup, but it's going to come down to the quarterbacks. And when you've got two quarterbacks, one young in big games that haven't been doing a bob, Jarrett Lee, and the other guy, John Parker Wilson, who on the road this year is hitting nearly 70% of his passes and has not thrown an interception on the road all year. Tickets a little bit uh, difficult to come by this afternoon. And if they're watching at home, they're watching all SEC college football games brought to you in crystal clear CBS high definition. I just don't know uh, where you could find more perfect weather for a college football Saturday afternoon. 76 degrees, slight breeze from the northwest to 14 miles per hour. Alabama leads the series, though LSU has won the last five straight meetings. Alabama's last win, a 31-0 victory here in 2002. LSU won the toss. They deferred to the second half. Alabama will get the ball. Javier Arenas, number 28, is deep. Josh Jasper kicks off. Mike McCoy is back there to provide blocking help. And here is Arenas. 28-yard line, first down and 10 for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now the lineups presented by Verizon Riles. John Parker Wilson, the senior from Hooper, Alabama, has had a history of playing much better on the road than at home. And you see his career stats. He holds all kinds of Crimson Tide records. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword, though. He's been better on the road, as we talked about, but his last four games, one touchdown pass, three interceptions. John Parker has not been carrying his football team. This number one team in the country. He's going to have to win a game here pretty soon. Huddle on the sideline. One back. That's Coffee. LSU. Play action on first down. Deep right side. Man coverage. And it is incomplete. Good man coverage. Provided by Chris Hawkins, the pass intended for Marquise Mays, number four. Well, Nick Saban would admire this coverage. He's right in the hip pocket of Mays. Turns around, finds the ball, and makes the receiver, Mays, go over and through him. Nick, who loves to teach that, couldn't do it any better than that. That was great coverage for LSU. Second down, 10. McCoy goes wide right with Nikita Stover. Coffee and left tackle. Coffee. Harry Coleman is back and makes the stop, but not until Glenn Coffee crosses midfield and is out of bounds at the 42. Well, this is a blow to the stomach for LSU. They did not think they could take him one on one. Look at this. Up one on Andre Smith takes the limb one on one. Danny McCray, 44, the safety comes up and whiffs on a tackle, and he's into the secondary again. That has to be a blow to this LSU defense. That's a gain of 31 for Glenn Coffey and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Trips formation, and now Stover comes to the near side. They'll hand it to Coffey. He's got a blocker in front, but he is spilled by number four, Jai Eugene, the tackle at the 41. Offensively, you've met John Parker Wilson up front, and this is a very good offensive line. Smith, Johnson, Caldwell, Davis, and Davis. Jones and McCoy, the wideouts. Coffee, the running back. Two tight ends, McCall and Walker. That's how they start the game normally, but they've had three wides in the early going here.
Second down, Parker Wilson, Julio Jones, one on one on the uh, on the wing, and he works for a first down at the 30. Defensively for LSU. Jackson Woods, Favorite, and Raheem Alem, who's earned a start with six sacks. Riley Beckwith and Shepard, the linebackers. Curtis Taylor, normally a starter at safety, out with an injury. Hawkins, Coleman, Danny McRae takes his place. And Jai Eugene is the other one. First down and ten. Deep handoff, coffee, nothing doing. Raheem Alem. Kind of surprised that LSU has gone with Alem to start this game. He's more of a pass rush specialist, and he's going to face a kind of a ground game. Now, you see, he made the play there in space. It wasn't Andre Smith blocking him. The play before they ran right at him, and Smith handled him. I thought we'd see more Pittman there. Kirsten Pittman is the only player on LSU who actually did play for Nick Saban. He's a sixth-year senior. Second down, John Parker Wilson, little one-man screen after Mike McCoy, and he is spilled at the 28. Big tackle by Jai Eugene there. That might have sprung. That could have gotten maybe 8, 12, 15 yards there. Catches him right by the shoe on this quick screen to the outside. Quick pass. pass. You know Alabama's going to do this. They're not sure. Now watch. He comes to the outside and just catches him on his right foot there. Big tackle. On third down, Earl Alexander, a wide receiver, has joined the lineup. He breaks and goes top of the screen, wide right. Third and six, opening drive of the afternoon. Blitz, John Parker Wilson, gets out of it, goes right, now pulls up and finds Alexander. Earl Alexander across the goal line. That could be a touchback. And then fumbles, yes. That, was he in possession when he crossed the line? That could be a touchback, I'm telling you. It is. Chad Jones. Now it is the fumble. I'm sorry, Bert. It will be reviewed, though. What a play by John Parker Wilson. And Earl Alexander stretches the ball out. Can't blame him here. He's going for the touchdown. He stretches it out, and then it's knocked. Now, we don't know if it broke the plane or not, but it's obviously a touchback if it did not. The previous play is on the further review. Oh, I don't know. No, I, don't I, don't, think so. I don't think it got there. I think the official's right on it. Look at the official right there. Got his eyes coming right down on it. Look at he's looking right at that play. Here's the official standing right here, and he's got his eye right on that line. Two of them. They got another over here. Oh, that's clear. Touchback. What a play by John Parker Wilson to get out of that, though. Nice positioning by the officials oh, as well. Oh, fantastic. Two and of a, them right on the end line. And Chad Jones, who's, who's comfortable playing sports. You know, he plays other sports, you know, and, and he's comfortable going for that ball. It was Chad Jones who had the tackle yes, yes. of John Parker Wilson a year ago in Tuscaloosa. Hit his foot, remember, on that one? Yep, and that led to Watch the us. winning Big touchdown. Rush. They blitzed on the play, by the way. Comes out of it, and then Alexander says, oh, yeah, maybe I should go. On the field is confirmed. Touchback. Ken Wagers is the referee today. Listen, Alabama should not feel bad, too bad about this. Yes, it's points. But they drove the ball against the defense. Last look at this. Inches away. Is it inches away all day? Or is it just a, something to come for? Is LSU going to start making plays? And now it's time for the playbook presented by the Hartford. Well, you look at this. First of all, LSU is going to come with the blitz on this play. Here's the linebackers. Watch. Here's Chad Jones there. He drifts this way, and he's going to make the play. Linebacker blitz. Now watch John Parker come out of the pocket. Now this worries Alabama. When John Parker scrambles, bad things happen. Not here, but remember Chad Jones? He went out of the picture. He hustles back and makes the play for LSU. He had to run 53 yards across that field to make that play. 
And a touch, that, touch back. Earl Alexander injured on the play. And getting uh, medical assistance or attention at least over on the Alabama bench. Jarrett Lee, redshirt sophomore from Brenham, Texas. In the backfield, they'll open in the eye. Quinn Johnson is the fullback. And here's Charles Scott. And the first play, no game. Jared Lee, redshirt freshman, has had problems with interceptions, but specifically interceptions, interceptions Gary, return for touchdown. Yeah, yeah, the worst part of an interception because when you're a freshman on a championship team, you're trying not to lose games. And when you throw them for picks the other way, you start to get self-confident, uh, conscious about it. You think your own team is second-guessing. And their two biggest losses this year, their only two losses, here's a whistle and... They'll bring, that, bring this back. Uh, he threw three interceptions in the Florida and Georgia losses that were returned for touchdowns. Had another one last week in the win over Tulane. Prior to the snap, false start, number 70 on offense, 25 yards, down lane second. That's Saron Black, the left tackle, and a second down and 17. Lee has had his moments, though. He, uh, known for already for a great quick release, gets the ball out well, as quickly as uh, just about anybody in the SEC. Here's the handoff to Scott going left. Hey, there's linebackers for Alabama. You talk about all the fancy stuff. When I say it's a real grown up football, keep an eye on Rolando McLean and watch a collision of 750 pounds. Terrence Cody and Herman Johnson, two biggest men. You can't, you don't, I don't have a circle big enough to get around these guys. <laughs> they are going to be facing each other. One's 360, one's 365. I mean, that's 750 pounds, 30, 40, 50, but it doesn't matter after that. Nobody can do it. Recall that Terrence Cody is back after uh -oh. the, almost intercepted. It is intercepted. Demetrius Bird, the intended receiver. Rashad Johnson got the pick. I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. It's third and a million on your own 15-yard line. You got a quarterback that's struggling. What are you trying to do? Look at how dangerous this throw is. Scores nothing, nothing here. Going to be a slant to the outside. Why not a draw play? Look at this. He's throwing it between three people. He's luckily got in there, and then the ball pops up because McLean puts a hit on him right there, and it went right to their other playmaker, Rashad Johnson. It's just, well, I'll just watch for a while, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, understand. I get your point. You know, when I can't hit my driver, I put it in the bag for a while, you know? <laughs> the injured player is Demetrius Bird, number two, the senior out of Miami. Number two receiver on this team. That's a that's a risky call. I, I just I don't think a slant is going to get you a first down. Well, in a sense, we were forewarned, were we not? Yes, we were. Uh, both Gary Crote, the offensive coordinator, and uh, Les Miles confirming that they script the first 12, 15 plays, and they were going to open it up early. But third and 17. That's Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator in the middle. Right. He said the ball was a little bit behind, but it was a tough throw, coach. Got a quarterback that's really nervous in a big game. And so here is Alabama with a second opportunity. First down at the 15. Coffee is the running back. Comes left again to the five. Down at the one. It's like watching the Oakland Raiders play football. They run the ball left behind Gene Upshaw and Art Shell. There's Big Andre. He's got Pittman this time. Pittman just kind of gets pushed out of the way by Big Andre Smith right there. Now, Pittman knew we'd have the cameras on him, didn't we? We talked to him yesterday. Yes. That's just too easy. Look at those blocks up front, right up the gut. First and goal, backs in the eye. No signal yet. It'll be second down. Derry Beckwith, number 48, made the stop.
second and goal. Oh, he dropped the ball. Sneak. Did he Look drop up. the ball? And it looked like his knee hit. Sure did. He dropped the ball, I think. Oh, man. I'll tell you, those quarterback sneaks near the goal line are tough. The, the center gets hit by two guys inside. He did not have that ball. Remind me of Jamarcus Russell at Florida two years ago. Third and goal. Quarterback sneak formation again. It is over left guard, and this time it's a touchdown, Alabama. Wilson. It's easier when you get the snap. Well, brutal strategy for LSU. Just brutal strategy. And so the interception, the ball thrown on third and 17. And there is a flag down now, we see, at the two-yard line. Celebration. A, a lot of players checked in. I wonder if they did it correctly. There were some odd numbers out there. It is against Alabama. Yep. Probably post-play, though. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 14 on the offense, penalty will be administered on the succeeding kickoff. John Parker Wilson got the touchdown and the unsportsmanlike call. And now Lee Tiffin is on to try I'm to I'm sure he more. got a few fingers and stuff to the eye on the play previously, and he was upset about it, but it's a big penalty. High snap. Ball is uh, put down in place by P.J. Fitzgerald. Let's see what happened here with John Parker. Comes out. He did the cell phone. Look at this cell phone thing is catching fire here. Yeah. Apparently the LSU fans who got Tebow's two years ago now have John Parker's. I don't recall that Tebow got an unfortunate like that. Oh, you always get away. The first guy always gets away from it. They're looking for it now. Anybody home? Doubleheader for you, the NFL on CBS tomorrow. Early game highlighted by Tennessee at Chicago. Late game, most of you will see Indianapolis at Pittsburgh, and it all begins. As per usual with J.P. and the quartet, the NFL today, tomorrow at noon Eastern time. This is so big now where this ball's being kicked off because Jarrett Lee felt that goal line on that last series. Now he's going to be in real comfortable territory. It's a big penalty for John Parker Wilson and a dumb one for John Parker Wilson. Kickoff comes from the 15-yard line. It's Lee Tiffin, the junior from Muscle Shoals, Alabama. And the deep man, Trendon Holiday, one of the best in the country. He's top of the screen. Keelan Williams is the other. This is Keelan Williams, number five. Well, Gary, you called it out near the 45. And as LSU sets up for the second time, let's go back and spend a moment with Tim in New York. All right, Vernon, Gary, wasn't easy, but Matthew Stafford's going to find A.J. Green for what turns out to be the game winner against Kentucky, 42-38 Bulldogs. And Wyoming beats Tennessee in Knoxville, ensuring a losing season and no bowl for Philip Fulmer in his final year. Back to you, Vern. Thank you, Tim. 7-0 Alabama here. Midway through the opening quarter, Brandon LaFell breaks off wide to the left, and Demetrius Bird, who was shaken up on the interception, is back on the field, number two. Backs in the eye, Charles Scott is the deep back. Jared Lee will throw, comes right, but a comeback pattern, it's complete at the 43. Jared Lee, we mentioned a red shirt freshman quarterback. The rest of the offense, Black, Johnson, Helms, Pitt, and Barksdale up front. LaFell, Bird of the wideouts, Richard Dixon, the tight end. Charles Scott, six games of 100-plus yardage this year. And Johnson is the fullback. 
First down, it's a 43. Thinking blitz, and they are coming. Here's Lee, left side, at the feet of Brandon LaFell. And defensively for Alabama, particularly effective against the run. Terrence Cody back after a two-week absence with a sprained knee. He's a large presence at nose tackle. The linebackers are led by McLean and a true freshman, Dante Hightower, number 30. And in the secondary, you've got Arenas, Justin Woodall, Rashad Johnson and Kareem Jackson. Double tight end set for LSU on second and ten. Scott left tackle. Third down and three, maybe four, depending on the spot. I was down on the field checking out Cody. Remember a couple years last year with Glenn Dorsey? I wanted to see the knee in warm-ups. He was way better, right in the middle right there, way better than Dorsey was when I went and watched warm-ups. He handles Helms right here. That's a good job by a nose tackle. You guys win that, get into the backfield. I thought he looked, you know, I mean, I thought Dorsey was 70% last year max. I think he's closer to 85 90%. And Nick Saban said they would spell him throughout. They're worried a little bit about conditions, but he has shared that spot throughout the season with uh, Josh Chapman. On third down, handoff Scott comes right. First down at the 30. Arenas, number 28, makes the stop. Who will impose their will on the offensive line? That's the name of this game. Cody is going to have to take on these double teams. He's, that's their, he's got the center and the guard trying to push him and punish him in this game. That's punishment right there. But he took up two guys. Very successful play for LSU. Scott began this year with four games of 100-plus. Held in check in the two losses. And he's got four carries for 11 yards in the early going here. On first down, blitz again. Lee, left side, behind LaFell. Well, we were here two weeks ago, but Jared Lee had a tough afternoon against Georgia. And no matter what the LSU players are looking like and clapping their hands, they talked about this interception and going down 7-0 early in that game as a body blow. And they felt they couldn't recover. They said, we're, not even, we're already losing. We hadn't even been on defense yet. Well, in this game, that early interception, you could see it. The slow starts for Jarrett Lee. And he's off to a slow one in this game with one of four and an interception already. Second down and ten. Here's Lee, left side in the corner. Got a man there. Touchdown, Demetrius Byrne. championship it hurt his team Boston field position as this drive began at the 45 and it opened up the playbook for Croton to go build the confidence back in Jarrett Lee because he wasn't nervous about throwing the ball watch the penalty is what set it up kicking off from your own 15 yard line John Parker don't have to do this that is a call now a speed release this is not a good job by Kareem Jackson Bird is a speed receiver. He didn't get his hand on him. Easy throw. No pressure for a quarterback throwing the fade. High school kids can throw that one. Demetrius Bird with his fourth touchdown reception of 2008. Alabama gets a third. I beg your pardon. LSU a 30-yard pass. Jarrett Lee to Demetrius Bird. And this one is tied with 6.21 to go. In the opening quarter, they only had to go 54 yards. And the last 30 came on that touchdown toss. Now Josh Jasper getting ready to kick off for the second time. Mike McCoy and Javier Arenas are the deep man. This Alabama team has jumped on top of opposition 
uh, teams this year. That's the first touchdown. They only allowed two field goals before that uh, TD in the first quarter. Here's Arenas. Has to hold up, and he's banged. Balls out. Balls out. Ball. <laughs> LSU has it. It was number 13, Ron Brooks, who made the hit from the backside. Fumbles happen from behind. Arenas was trying to do too much. That's where they always come from. The play was dead on that one. Arenas got almost everything he could out of it, and then he starts to slow down to do something, and he gets the hit from behind. Watch this. That's what causes the fumble. You don't even see it, and then it's anybody's ball. So LSU gets the really short field at the 30-yard line in a tie game, 7-7. Terrence Tolliver is on the field. And Lee will go from the spread. Brett Helms, the senior. Things couldn't have happened better since that touchdown for LSU and Gary Colton to rebuild the confidence. Here's the ball. Lee coming right. Fires it. Two high. Intended for Terrence Tolliver, incomplete. Marquise Johnson with the tackle. Well, first quarter SEC games, they had outscored their opponent 65 to 6 until that touchdown. In the meantime, the reverse for LSU, they have been outscored 34 30. Now, remember this. When Georgia scored first two weeks ago, when we hear LSU yeah, came back scores. and made it seven to seven, they answered the last time. They're answering again. Second down and ten. Draw play. Scott. Charles Scott. LSU touchdown. kickoff and a fumble and a 30-yard run. And Kurt David on to attempt the extra point. Well, how do you like this well-designed play? First, it's going to be Herman Johnson pulling and then Quinn Johnson. We need a little Johnson and Johnson here. Watch. This one and then watch number 45 come in and he takes on a high tower. Johnson and Johnson. That's a bandage right there. One block, two blocks. He blocks Hightower, and Scott is in. We got Johnson and Johnson and Scott into the end zone. One, two, touchdown. LSU with 14 points, 24 seconds. 14-7, they lead. SEC online. Log on to cbsports.com slash college football live and get the CBS Game of the Week streamed live. Javier Arenas fumbled when hit by Ron Brooks on the last kickoff. He's one of two men deep. And Arenas is chased back to the one. Ryan Baker, backup linebacker, number 22. I'll tell you, if you don't think Nick Saban coaching the other side has anything to do with this LSU attack, you're crazy. This team is ready to play. I saw it in the faces of those players we talked to yesterday. They could taste this football game. And that LSU line is blocking the best I've seen all year. This is a rare position for Alabama. Through the first nine games of this year, they trailed by one minute and 15 seconds. That was to Ole Miss, a game they ultimately won at home. John Parker Wilson, chased by Tyson Jackson, fires it left into double coverage, or right, rather, and it is incomplete. 
LSU, I think, may be the only team that matches up strength for strength in the SEC comfortably with Alabama. Alabama imposed their will against Georgia and Clemson and Tennessee couldn't match up. LSU's big guys match up with the big guys for Alabama. Mike McCoy, wide right. Mark Ingram, number 22, is in a tailback. He's a true freshman. And he gets his first carry in this ball game. It'll be third down and long for Alabama. Let's check in with Tracy Wolf. Well, Vern, you mentioned Alabama behind for only the second time this season. Well, Nick Saban told us this week he was expecting adversity in this game. He said the important thing is how they manage the adversity in games like this. He said they can't be affected by the last play, not get frustrated, and keep playing. He said that's the way you win on the road. That's what makes great victories, the adversities and how you overcome them. They'll have a chance to they test it, and they've got to time call out. timeout. Yeah, they're, yep. they're, they're discombobulated. Crimson Tide uses one of its allotment of three. 14-7 LSU. Current standings out west. Alabama can clinch a spot in the SEC title game with a victory today. First time since 1999. And Les Miles working the line judge during the break. What do you suppose? Third and eight. LSU brings four. John Parker Wilson deep down the middle. Caught in a great catch by Julio Jones, the freshman who struggles for a first down out to the 41-yard line. Well, you don't execute it any better than this. You just really don't. Jones, he looked like he's coming off the limp left yep. arm there a little bit. But I, I tell you, you just don't do it any better than this. Coming right in here. Well, excuse me, right there. Got the wrong cue. Coming right in here. Now watch how tight this throw is. Comes in in between two, three players and snatch right out of the air. What a throw. Great protection and what a catch. Nikita Stover has taken his place. Earl Alexander is also on the field and Marquise Mays. So three wides. McCall, the tight end, sets up tight to the left. This is Ingram and uh, finds it a little tough in the interior. Ingram. Now let's go back to the studio for this Liberty Mutual update. Here's Tim Brandon. All right, Vern, another one of those one-loss teams to keep an eye on the BCS. Oklahoma now up on Texas A&M, 21-0 behind this Chris Brown 22-yard touchdown run. Meanwhile, in Iowa, Sean Green, a 14-yard touchdown run. They lead Penn State 7-3 as they open the second. Back to you. All right, thank you, Tim. Second down and eight. And Ingram is in along with three wides. Wilson, right side, batted down by Chris Hawkins. Third and eight. Well, that's Hawkins again out to the outside. He's having a football game here. Watch this. Try to come with a hitch. They went fade before. Can't do it any better than that. Cannot do it any better than that. Well, you know, I, I kind of thought, and I think the LSU player coaches thought that the LSU defense had lost their swagger a bit. Today, looking at those corners and safeties and defensive, it looks like they're challenging everything. That's how you got to do it. Julio Jones is still on the bench. We've got Mays and Stover. And a timeout called by LSU. McCoy and who? Oh, there's Julio Jones. He is back on the field. That's good news for Alabama. Thursday on CBS, some mysteries require a scientific touch. See why critics call Thursday's number one new show, Super Cool. The 11th hour, a new episode, Thursday on CBS, America's most watched network. And so third and eight for the second time. LSU sends four defensive ends into its defensive alignment. They've got Alem Johnson, Tyus Jackson, and Kirsten Pittman. Third and eight again. Last time they did not blitz. Here's Chad Jones. He's a blitzer. Let's see if he comes this time. Does not. John Parker Wilson back. 
Oh, boy, right into double coverage and knocked away again, Gary, by Chris Hawkins. Yeah, they're going to have to put a double move on Chris Hawkins. He is guessing every first move in this game. If I'm on the sideline as my normal position of backup quarterback, I'm telling the coaches he's jumping on every first move. Look at he's guessing every first move out there. Coach, we got to double move this guy. That's going to send uh, P.J. Fitzgerald on the punt and Trendon Holiday. The speedster, track star for LSU at the 20-yard line, one 92-yard touchdown on a punt return earlier this season. And Holiday with a fair catch as he drifts over to his left and makes the grab safely at the 11. 46-yard punt, nothing on the return. And now let's take a look at Home Depot's tools for success. Well, you remember Jared Lee throws the interception, but the great field position allows Gary Croton to go back to his quarterback and rebuild his confidence. You do that by throwing the ball to the outside of the field where there's not a lot of guys and one-on-one. -on -one. Alabama goes one-on-one. -on -one. Every quarterback loves to throw the fade, so the great field position allowed Croton to go back to his quarterback and say, I got to build you up. I'm going to need you. So, Coach, didn't like your first pass. Really like these next two. Gary Croton, one-time head coach at Brigham Young University. First down now at the 13-yard uh, line. Here's the test. Backed Ke up. Keelan Williams is in there. Lee drills it. Man open. LaFell, and it's incomplete. Boy, he looked like he was open. Oh, yeah, it was just way too late. I, I actually thought that ball was going to be intercepted on that play. I, I'll tell you, Justin Woodall had this thing all the way, and I don't know if he slipped. The ball was woefully underthrown on the play, and I thought Woodall was going to get there and make the play. I'll tell you. The LSU coaches are doing exactly what they told us. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be aggressive. To your personal shock and all. Well, I, I just, well, the third and 17, I don't get that one. All right, I don't mind first down passes. Third and 17 is a little aggressive. Second down and 10 now. Lee off to a slow start. He's two for seven. Here's the handoff to Holiday. Comes right. Young man who had registered a 100-meter time of 10.02 seconds. He can scoot. Well run fast and you're not scared that's a pretty good combination this guy can run fast and he's fearless with football speed and toughness well, that's a nice one you know that was one of the alerts by the way for alabama when number eight nine or 14 around the field eight is holiday jordan jefferson and andrew hatch are the two running quarterbacks that's the alert for the alabama defense third down Scott and Johnson in there. Now here's Scott. Comes right. Tries to get around the corner. He does get the first down. Javier Arenas makes the tackle. But they move the chain. A first down deep in their own end. Of the field. Well, I felt all week that this was a matchup that LSU relished. Les Miles was going to be on their team about... Are you sure Alabama's tougher than you? They've been pushing people around all year. They're going to push us around on our own field? I'll bet that was in their ear all week. A first down and 10 in a 14-7 game. Tigers with the lead. Here's Holiday again. And tackled by Arenas at the 30-yard line. Gain of maybe a half foot. Right, a nice call by Kevin Steele, defensive coordinator for Alabama. He blitzed from the wide side of the field right into the sweep. Here's Kevin Steele, a former head coach at Baylor University. Associate head coach, defense, Alabama. Final two minutes, opening quarter. Alabama scored first. I always think these first quarters fly by, but it seems like I've seen everything in this game. <laughs> I agree. I keep looking at the clock. Right. Hey, we've been here right. for three hours. for a hot dog. <laughs> Scott. Charles Scott has a touchdown run of 30 yards in this game. And Demetrius Bird, a 30-yard pass reception. It is 14-7. That last tackle made by Rolando McClain. So you keep your eye on also number 45, Quinn Johnson. He is delivering some blows when he's in there at fullback. He's taking on those big linebackers for Alabama, McLean and Hightower. 
Third and six, and they'll go with three wides to the left side. Alabama with wide splits defensively. And they are bringing the view, and that pass incomplete, wildly so to the left side. It will be fourth down. See how different Alabama is with the field position, how they could control the game. When the ball's on the 45, it's a whole different game. Lee now two of eight, one touchdown, one interception. And the two passes have been the easy ones to the outside where there's nearly really a lot of reading of the play. Just toss it outside. This will be Brady Dalfrey, number 38, on the punt. And Javier Arenas will let it bounce. Runs away from it. It doesn't bounce till it's, uh, well, it was not out of bounds. I thought it was. Alabama number one in the country, also number one in the BCS poll. Look where they started the season. 24th in the preseason AP rank. Texas Tech, that scintillating victory over Texas last Saturday night, started the season 12th. Penn State began in the number 22 spot. That's the current BCS top three. 41 seconds to go, opening quarter, 14-7. John Parker Wilson in the shotgun. Lobs it out. He, oh, boy. He had Nick Walker, number 88, all by himself. And a quick strike up to the 48-yard line. 18-yard gain. I'll tell you, John Parker Wilson is like a basketball player who's a good jump shooter. You know, a stand, you know, passing the ball, he doesn't dribble. And just stands there and shoots like a Steve Alford. When he's in the pocket, he can set up and throw the ball. He is very accurate, and he knows what he's doing. When he has to move around and move his feet, that's when he makes the Alabama coaches very nervous. I'm a little surprised that last play wasn't reviewed. I, I thought he got his one foot in, though. Before Did you? Okay. Ends. Play fake. John Parker Wilson lobs it out. It's caught by Travis McCall, the other tight end. He is more the blocking tight end than Nick Walker, the receiver. And let's go get an update. Here's Tracy Wilson. Guys, Julio Jones running onto the field now. He missed the first two plays because he was taken into the locker room to look at that right shoulder. The Alabama does not give any injury reports, so I have not heard from them, but it does look like they added some padding to that shoulder, and they taped his left elbow just before running out on the field, guys. All right, Trace, thank you. Second down and three. And he is back on the field. Second down, and we have reached the end of the quarter. The end of one. Had a lot going on here at Tiger Stadium. 14-7 LSU will return to Tiger Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Saving less miles. They've met once before as respected head coaches at Alabama and LSU. That was a 41-34 victory by LSU last year in Tuls Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa, you know that. We <laughs> welcome you back to Baton Rouge. Second down and three. John Parker Wilson. That one's trouble. Intercepted. Picked off by Patrick Peterson. Boy, he had great position from the get-go. Peterson is one of the big-time recruits brought into this program. USA Defensive Player of the Year matched up one-on-one. -on -one. Look how he cuts off the receiver. Then when the receiver turns to look for the ball, Peterson looks for the ball. John Parker threw that ball anticipating his wide receiver would win it. He did not. That's the third turnover this game. And John Parker Wilson's first interception on the road this year. Well, as close as we expect this one to be, turnovers will be a factor. Charles Scott is the running back. He goes right, oh, Charles oh, Scott. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, you're, Whoa. You're, you're a few years removed from the football field. You're reacting. Uh, you know what? This is manly football <laughs> going on out there. You want to play football? 
Quinn Johnson, number 45, he's coming down the field like a freight train. And then they got Charles Scott right behind him. You can see why LSU's so disappointed in their season. I mean, you know, they've got such a strong football team, and they've lost football games by turning the ball over. They've got a second down here. And there's Johnson leading the way left side. Scott out to the 28-yard line. I'll tell you, this is... This is headache football here. Les Miles, the Bo Schembechler disciple against Nick Saban, who's a Woody Hayes disciple at Ohio State, and they're playing three yards in a cloud of dust right now. You know, Skip Bergman, the retired athletic director here, uh, made a visit while you were down on the field just to say hi. He and his wife, Sandy, he's the one who said he thought that Saban and Miles potentially could have that same kind of Schembechler, Woody Hayes, rivalry and relationship well they got the universities to help it's not just the, the coaches you got two universities that commit the resources have the history to be rivals for the next you know we could have a 10-year war here start number 78 on the offense 25 yards that remains third so the five-yard penalty against the tigers well saving five years here Came in in 2000, left 2004, 48-16 overall, two SEC titles, one national championship. And Les Miles came in. He's posted a 40-8 and eight record, a national championship last year. Third down, six. Blitz from the corner, Rashad Johnson. And Lee had real trouble. It almost slipped out of his hand. Well, he was trying to get it for a screen. He didn't have it. Let's go back to Tim in New York. All right, you guys have been talking some Big Ten. How about a little power football from the Big Ten? As Evan Royster finds a seam at Kinnick Stadium to make it a 10-7 lead now for number three, Penn State. South Carolina head ball coach cruising along today against Arkansas. UT Martin giving Tommy Dumberville all he wants at the break. Vernon Gary. All right, Tim, thank you. Fourth down and the punting unit on. Should be good field position for Alabama. Javier Arenas at the 43-yard line. And Brady Dalfrey with the punt. Arenas grabs it. Nailed. <laughs> Harry Riley, number 56, first man there. A 34-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Well, as I say, go get your potato chips and popcorn and crack open a cold one. This is real man football here. want to thank MetLife for providing today's aerial coverage. Watch out for more beautiful aerials of CBS sports teams. Up with MetLife. Let me read that again. <laughs> As CBS sports teams up with MetLife for more coverage this fall. It works when you read it properly. Joel Bakken is the pilot. Those guys floating around the skies for a while. And providing these gorgeous shots on a sensational day in Baton Rouge. First down 10, John Parker Wilson at quarterback. Makes the draw. Has all day. My gosh. And there's Julio Jones underneath. And he's got it at the 25-yard line. How about the time for Wilson? Well, all day is the key word here. I mean, you talk about. I don't think LSU believed they were going to throw the ball after the interception. I think LSU's playing rough. Okay, where's the ball? Look at No one's even going for the quarterback. And that allows Julio Jones to come across real, real late. And just pluck it from the air again. He's, he's something, that guy. So you throw the ball in about an eight-foot circle. He catches it. That's a gain of 26. A first down at the 26. 14-7. Alabama trails. And here's Glenn Coffey. Tackle made by Chad Jones, number three. Well, Nick Saban is gone, obviously. There's one of the guys right there coming off. Al Woods was Nick before, and that's been one of the problems with the tackles for LSU. But there's four senior defensive linemen on this football team. Tyson Jackson, Tremaine Johnson, Charles Alexander, and Marlon Fravorite. They all were recruited by Nick Saban. You can feel, you can taste Curtin Pittman. Oh, you can taste the fact that they want to win this game. 
Second down and nine. Blitz coming right up the middle. John Parker Wilson has to get rid of it. Catch is made out of bounds by Nick Walker, the tight end. Terrific pressure by Jacob Cutrera, number 54. Kirsten Pittman had a chance to chat with him yesterday. Missed two full seasons. Assist on the knee in his junior year and then a torn Achilles. And he said it was the second one that was really devastating. The only man in college football with two national championship rings. 2003, 2007. Third down. Interesting. Kutera's in there for Beckwith. They were not happy with Beckwith's play coming into this game. Stunts defensively. Wilson with time. Overthrows Julio Jones. Yeah, that's a bad one. Hard to overthrow a six foot four or five guy who jumps like that. This was the play earlier of the opposite side. Actually, I think the ball on the other side, did it go for Nikita Stover, I think, maybe on that play. Lee Tiffin on for a 42-yard field goal. P.J. Fitzgerald. No, sir. No, sir. Tiffin has now missed six this year. He's 13 of 19. Well, nobody said it'd be easy to win a national championship. There's always one of those games that you've got to gut out where the other team is ready to play and the breaks aren't going your way. Remember, a year ago in this game, Matt Flynn threw three interceptions in this game. LSU won, though. Welcome back to Baton Rouge. It's now time to cue the duck. Welcome him from stage right. There he is. Aflac. The Aflac trivia question. Which is the lowest ranked team in the preseason AP poll to win the BCS National Championship? And uh, remember now, BCS is not that old. Thankfully. And we showed you where Penn State and Alabama was and Texas Tech. Yeah. 24-22 and Texas Tech 12. Who ever thought that? Preseason Tech is ahead of those teams. Keelan Williams is the running back, number five. And he'll follow Quinn Johnson's block again. Boy, Johnson has been a workhorse. The senior out of Edgar, Louisiana, number 45. Weighs 262. Lyle Hitt also is going to pull around number 65. Johnson takes on and just destroys the defensive end that time. Well, actually, it's a linebacker in this front, but he basically is a defensive end in Nick Saban's uh, defense. Yeah, Big old linebackers. Excuse me, Vern. That's okay. Brandon Fanny. 30 of those yards scored by uh, Charles Scott. Here's the toss. Keelan Williams gets a downfield block. Tackle at the 47. Dante Hightower caught in a stunt that time. A perfect call on the play. The option the opposite way. Watch Hightower coming this way. Play going the opposite way. Couldn't draw up any better. You get the pitch and you get the line, the fullback out on jo Johnson to the outside. Brilliant play for LSU. And that's a first down with uh, LSU leading 14 to 7. Scott or Keenan Williams again, number five. Putting on a show. Yes, they are. Quinn Johnson, ISO left, run behind Saran Black. Nice block, rub off onto the linebacker. Beautiful rub off on the linebacker by Black. He gets high tower again. That is one of the things I was looking for in this game. Whether the LSU offensive line could get to the second level and get to the Alabama linebackers, they are. Wonder if Cody's not the force he had been early in the year. LSU, 99 rushing yards. Uh, the table here. That's inside the 40, 39. And Orlando McCain. 
makes the stop. First half of the SEC this year, Cody in the middle. Terrence Cody might have been the most valuable player in the league. He was stuffing everything. Now look at this. Brett Helms is handling him by himself. That wasn't happening. Guys are injured. Cody looks to me like he's good enough to play, but he doesn't look like he's the force he was before he got injured. Third and one. Keelan Williams behind Quinn Johnson in the eye. Option. Keelan Williams, Johnson out there to help block, but great pursuit, and this one will be short of the first down. Dante Hightower. Well, big Mount Cody was a force early in the year. Up and down the sideline, running up plays, even lining up in the backfield and blowing out Ole Miss for a touchdown. Things were good, and then things turned very, very bad when he got the dreaded offensive line falling on his back. Back uh, of his legs. He was me. out for two weeks, and he's limping a little as he goes over. Well, Brady Dalfrey back to punt. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> a year ago, this LSU team was 13 to 16 on fourth down attempts for first downs. This year, they're only three of nine unless Miles decides not to try it on fourth and two. Alabama gets it back. But they're deep in their own territory. Eight thirty-seven to go first half. John Parker Wilson has thrown a, a touchdown. One of the big plays of this game was after he scored. What is it about cell phones here? <laughs> this was Tim Tebow a year ago. That two. night game, that fabulous night game. No Sean Marino two weeks ago. Now the first two guys get away with it, okay? John Parker Wilson earlier in this quarter after he scored a touchdown, but he got flagged for 15 he yards. He should have. A very selfish play by a quarterback who should know better. It turned into a big play as Alabama kicked off from its own 15-yard line. It led to the tying touchdown. And then LSU got one more. We're at 14 to 7. This is Julio Jones. Boy, does he fight after the catch? This guy's an amazing football player. My goodness. 19 yard game. I'll tell you, there's some great ones all over college football. These young. Freshman wide receivers schooled so much better than they were before in years past because of the passing camps and improved coaching and spread offenses in high school. They come in ready to play. Four in this game. Here's the handoff. This is Mark Ingram, the true freshman, coming right and runs into Derry Beckwith, number 48. Ingram uh, coaches said he hit a, a midseason freshman slump. He's a, a true freshman and then got his spark back last week in a big game against Arkansas State. And has provided a lot of relief for Glenn Coffey this year. He's a 5'10, 215 pound freshman from Flint, Michigan. Second down. McCall. Second catch of this game just short of the first Wilson's down. Pass is complete to number 83, Travis McCall. Well, Nick Saban was here for five years, left to the Dolphins, then came back. How about this list of men who coached here, left, and came back? Dana X. Bible, who was also a coach at both AM and the University of Texas years ago. Paul Dietzel. Uh, left here and went to Army, and he scheduled while he was here right. as the, the athletic games. director. <laughs> he scheduled a home and home series with South Carolina for like six years down the road. I think the bite of the media in the modern game, though, it's much different with Nick coming back. Don't you do, you? yeah. You do. I, I just think this is it's special. It's going to be special. You're suggesting Dana X Bible did, didn't have internet, well, no, sports yeah, right. talk radio. Uh, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> 
I think tin cans with wires were right. involved. You know, uh, John Parker started off quickly in this game when Alabama scored on their opening drive. He started off three for four. Then he went four for ten with an interception. And now he's coming back a little bit here with a nice call there to kind of rub off the tight end and get a nice easy completion for him here against this LSU defense. Mark Ingram is the running back. Third and one. McCoy out, Earl Alexander in. Ricky Jean Francois urging the crowd. Well, which way do they go? Do they go left behind Upshaw and Shell? I, I mean, I mean Smith and Johnson. <laughs> yep. Oh, he oh, fumbled it. Boy, third and very short and kind of a gimmicky play there. Ingram does recover. We're going to try to get around the end and outflank LSU really quickly. The ball was a little bit behind that time. Not a very good pitch by John Parker Wilson to the ball carry. Remember, they were trying to get outside and get around the defense. Looked like it would have worked, too. Now, Chad Jones is back to return P.J. Fitzgerald's punt instead of Trendon Holiday. It's Jones who has returned five this year. Fine punt. Jones moves up, grabs it at the 15. Has a little room. From behind. Tackled at the 33 by Eric Anders. 45-yard punt, 18 on the return. LSU leads it with six minutes and 25 seconds to go. First half. Tim Brando in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Spencer, Tony, and I will get you caught up on all of the action, including Tennessee going down to Wyoming, ensuring a losing season and no bowl in Philip Fulmer's final year in Knoxville. Now back to Alabama LSU. All right, Tim, we have talked all day about uh, Nick Saban's return and the passion with which his return was anticipated. The anchor here was uh, a billboard on Interstate 10, and last night uh, a Saban effigy was burned. And uh, you want to know the truth about this? It was some folks who were trying to attract people to sell condos. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. No. Uh, <laughs> So they gathered scores. He scores. Yeah, there were scores that showed up. Well, I tell you, they both respect and loathe Nick at the same time, and they should. I mean, you know, I mean, that's the way. That's the fun of this sport. I just threw a flag on myself. Oh goodness! First down and ten. Marcel Darius, number fifty-seven, with the tackle. Oh. The Duck wants the answer to the athletic trivia question. Lowest ranked team in the preseason AP poll to win the BCS National Championship. Hmm. Look at this. Well, the, actually, I was faking there. I knew the answer. You did? Yeah, well, because I did that game. I was... <laughs> Terrible game. <laughs> no, no, that, was a good game. that was Josh. That was, a, that was a good Oklahoma. There's motion. Cody. Or was it Chapman? Darius. It was the freshman. So uh, they've used Cody at nose tackle. Now Darius, a freshman from Huffman, Alabama, reached across. and Yeah, the, the, I, I think the pressure. Listen, last year, the number one and number two in the month of November and December in college football went a combined three and seven at number one. We talked to Les about it. He says, well, you know, looking back, Looking back on it, I, I, there was pressure, and you have to deal with it. Oh, he thought for sure it was the other way, as we did. But you know what? About this matchup, I, I, I think it was right when he said we are comfortable and confident in this matchup. He knew his team match up well for this game. Well, that one went the other direction, so it's second down and 12 now with 5.28 to go. There it is, right there. Top two teams. Scott. To the 35. It'll be third and nine. 
It's a big series here for Alabama, and that's why that penalty was so big, which way it went, because now remember, you got to think forward here a little bit. Five minutes to go as we take a look at that offside penalty. Had it gone the other way? Oh, yeah, you could see the head flinch by the center. Helms that time. That was a great call by this uh, officiating crew because LSU will get the ball to start the next half. They could have moved it down score and got it again. It's like getting to serve twice since tennis. Third and eight, officially. And Jarrett Lee is in the gun. Corner blitz. Arena's coming. Uh -oh. Over the middle, intercepted. Uh -oh. Picked off by Rashad Johnson. And he comes right. He's got a little convoy. Johnson cuts left. Touchdown. Alabama, no flags. This will be embarrassing. This is going to be tough to take if you're LSU. Six touchdowns returned off interceptions so far this year off the arm of Jared Lee. Six throwing over the middle and watch how Alabama funnels the ball into the middle of the field. And instead of the scenario Gary anticipated, Rashad Johnson, the leader defensively for the second time this year, has taken a pick the distance. All the players will funnel the ball into the middle of the field into the safety right there. Now watch what happens. Ball comes down and across and led too much. That's an easy throw right to the middle of the field. Redshirt freshman out of Brenham, Texas. Jarrett Lee, six interceptions returned for touchdowns. That is the most in Division One. He and Demetrius Bird having a conversation. What do you think? Well, I think guys are trying to tell Lee and keep him pumped up and say, you're okay, you're okay. And Lee's telling them, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine, don't worry about it, I'll be there the rest of the game. I even saw Les walk by him and tap him on the, on the butt and say, come on, let's go, you're the only guy we got. Lee Tiffin will kick off. But I think Jarrett Lee was trying to tell his teammates, don't worry, I made a mistake, but I'll be fine. Kind of an enormous load oh, for him to carry, on. isn't it? Playing quarterback in the SEC is not easy, and being a freshman and doing it is really tough. Trinman Holiday at the goal line goes right. Now he's up near the 20-yard line and out of bounds. And we head to uh, New York for Tim Brando for this Heisman watch. All right, Vern, Colton McCoy completed 70% of his throws against Baylor. This is one of his two hookups uh, today that was uh, very big. Five touchdown passes overall. Now, tonight, Sam Bradford obviously is playing right now. Has a couple of touchdown passes. But tonight, Tim Tebow and Graham Harrell will be on display. With Harrell, your leader in the clubhouse. Back to you, Vern. All right, thank you, Tim. And right here, 14-14 with 4.25 to go at uh, Heisman Watch presented by Nissan. This is going to be really interesting to watch how Croton comes back here now. Four and a half minutes. He does not want to let this game get away from him. Scott comes left out to the 25. Well, we saw Jarrett Lee against Georgia here a couple of weeks ago, and there was good and there was bad. Yeah, throwing over the middle of the field has been Jarrett Lee's problem. Remember, he had that one against Auburn early in the year, but the ones over the middle of the field against Georgia hurt him. The touchdown passes were to the outside, but then Nick Saban kind of adjusted. He's now forcing the LSU receivers to the middle of the field and forcing Lee to throw it over the middle. Keep it on the ground on second down, Scott. Yeah, I, I, I bet you Les Miles said, get me out of the half here. Right. Get me out of the half. I would have loved 14-7, but I don't want 21-14. Player down, Saron Black, the outstanding left tackle for LSU. Yeah, that doesn't happen much around here because Andre Whitworth and Saron Black has played about 85 straight games at left tackle here. Bottom of the screen right there. Let's see if somebody falls on him again, like usual. It is coming from the backside, right on the back of the ankle. Can't quite see who it was, to tell you the truth. Prince Hall, apparently. 
Wow, number Prince, 21. Yeah, that's why I didn't see it because Prince doesn't get much playing time anymore. No. <laughs> Black will be assisted to his feet. Andrew Whitworth, who was his predecessor at left tackle, a proud member of the Cincinnati Bengals, and he is in town. Walked in after we left last night, the restaurant. Really? Yes. Oh. And uh, producer mean, Craig Silver. What did he walk in about 9.45? He did that. Well, 8.30. No, we were, <laughs> really? <what's... laughs> you and I had curfew last night. <laughs> oh, I was in early. And he, uh, Craig Silver was, was still dining and said he blocked out the moon when he walked in. Oh. Here's Black. Well, the LSU people were nice to us. We had a great dinner last night. Ernest McCoy is in at left tackle on third down. 3.33 to go. Jared Lee rolls out, looks for Holiday. He's covered. Pulls up, now finds oh, Holiday. Oh, he threw it over Holiday's head. And Jared Lee got booed at home last week against Tulane. This is not going to be a pleasant sound. See, I really believe that this is where Andrew Hatch on this third and short would have come in and run the option or a rollout and run for the first down. Jarrett Lee doesn't really have that comfort feeling. Great coverage right here to the outside. They anticipate it well. Nobody to throw to and force Jarrett Lee to just dump it. Had he just gunned it up there and made the first down, he could have taken a first down and ended maybe the half here. Andrew Hatch is uh, not good. Not good. No, he's uh, out probably for the year with a lower leg injury sustained against Georgia. They come after the ball, but uh, Palfrey does get it. Oh, there's... Arenas is a penalty. Yep. A good penalty. Yeah. Carnell Hatcher, number 37, made sure he had uh, made contact. Well, this couldn't have finished this half any worse for LSU. Remember, they had the ball with about five and a half minutes to go. Chance to make a drive and then get it in the second half. They give up a pick six. And now Alabama gets the ball back after a penalty here. That's the thing about Alabama. They're so solid. I mean, even when things go bad, they just keep kind of doing their game. Disregard the flag. There is no foul or kick catch interference on the play. See, I, I, I guess I don't get that. I mean, he would have probably caught it had he not been nudged. It's not like a pass that went over his head. Okay, here's the fair catch signal. Now he's tracking it. He's tracking it. He gets hit, and now he can't go for the ball. He lets it go. That's got to be a penalty. Did he do a pirouette and get out of the way? No contact? I don't know. I thought he was close enough to touch them right there, and I thought Arenas thought he got hit. Guy did a Barishna call. First down. Walker, the tight end, comes to the right. John Parker Wilson again with a lot of time, goes deep, and he's got a man down there who stumbles as he tries to get to the ball. Julio Jones covered by Danny McRae. Well, they took their shot. It's kind of cool here. Julio Jones thought he was going to get the ball short, and then he realized that Parker Wilson was throwing it deep. He kind of, kind of runs back, and he's looking for the ball quickly. Watch him look back. And then he realizes it's deep, and he just turns his head like kind of like a Willie Mays and runs to the spot. And Danny McRae kind of beats it to him. That was kind of cool. 3.03 to go, first half. Julio Jones out of Foley, Alabama. Coffee is the running back. Second and 10, 14-14. Contrera backs out. John Parker Wilson near side dropped by Nick Walker, the tight end, third and ten. Alexander fumbled through the end zone. Wilson had a penalty after the touchdown. Arenas fumbled on a kickoff return. They had one other fumble that Alabama did recover. And yeah, we don't even have room for the interception. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Well, I, I, I would think that Nick Saban would be very conservative here. We'll see. He does have four wide receivers on the field with 2.59 to go first half. LSU brings four. They stunt. John Parker Wilson, and he's short of the first down. And remember, there's no... 
patch. So all they got now is Jordan Jefferson, a true freshman. Undefeated as a high school quarterback. They were hoping to redshirt him. And then uh, Andrew Hatch, who started the season as a starting quarterback, injured in the loss to Georgia. And uh, Jefferson came on in the latter stages of the game against Tulane the other night. He's thrown only one pass this year. Hunt on fourth down. It's P.J. Fitzgerald. Great directional kick here. Take it at the 15. Yeah, look at those bodies flying. We mentioned Andrew Hatch, and you will not see him today. Go back and uh, watch what happened to him. Well, first play of the game, he runs the option and gets a face mask right there. We're not sure that was it, but at least his eye was hurting. But I think on this sack right here, he bent his leg back. And we're doubtful whether he will play football again this year, right? Yes. Young man who uh, well, the, began the, his career yes. at BYU. Well, I, would, I, I would be surprised if they put Jordan Jefferson in here. I, I mean, this is a kind of a tough spot. Two minutes. I think you got to get to halftime here if you're LSU. 219 until that time. Keelan Williams and Jarrett Lee is the quarterback, as you saw. And they say that this is the best part of Jarrett Lee's game, the two-minute drill. No snap. Bobbles a handoff, but uh, Williams does get back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. Tim Spencer and Tony Barnhart coming up. Geico at the half as we get deep into the 2018 college football season. We'll get you up to date on everything that's going on around the country. Well, I can tell you right now, if there's no significant gain, Nick Saban will use one of his last two timeouts here. It's Williams as the running back. He is to the left of Jarrett Lee. Goes deep, has a man. Caught by Dixon, the tight end, first down. All the way out to the 44-yard line with 90 seconds to go. Boy, right, this is a nice throw. Seam route. This is kind of LSU's play number six. Remember that one for T Texas Tech? Yeah. Right up the seam. A gain of 21, and the clock started after the chains are put down. Here's Lee. Flips it out. One hopper to the right. Let's go back to the previous play. Dixon's going to come right out to the outside, and he goes right down the hash. Play number six, four vertical. There he is. Boom, hit him right over the linebacker's head. Second down and ten. The coaches have all said that this is where Lee is most comfortable. Shotgun, two-minute offense. And off Keelan Williams goes right, slips through the line of scrimmage, and crosses the 50 to the 49 with one... 10 to go. Eric Anders makes the stop. That's a gain of six. Very conservative here for LSU still. Two timeouts left, and it's third and four. They're still not trusting Lee. Third and four. Under a minute. Keelan Williams has room. First down plus. Forty-four seconds to go. Clock stop as they move the chain. LSU has two timeouts remaining. Well, it's been all run here. This is just a belly handoff, and Williams jumps through the play right there and makes a miss. Alabama safeties are missing on tackles. Colt David, the place kicker, senior out of Great Vine, Texas. Here's the pass. Oh, that was all. You bet it was. Yeah, that was really yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Marquise Johnson was so close to the interception. 33 seconds remaining in the first half. Time has been called by LSU. Well, they have moved the ball into field goal range. 33 seconds to go. Second down and nine for LSU. Cole David. Well, within his range, his, uh, well, longest of the year is 51. Eight of 10 for the season. See, 
so well managed. I, you know, Alabama was thinking, okay, they're not going to run it, run it down on us if they if they throw it, okay, but they're not going to run it. But that's after the pass to Dixon, they ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball for that big play, and now every play in the offense is open because you make a mistake down here, it's not likely to cost you anything big. Jared Lee comes back on for the day, four of fourteen, two interceptions, one of which was returned for a touchdown. Now the big receivers are also in. Remember how good Bird is down here against the fade. Tolliver up to the top. And LaFell in the slot. He comes back, gets it, and drops it. Whoa. Brandon LaFell had the dropsies a year ago and spent a little time with us yesterday explaining that uh, he thought he was over that problem. So as... Uh, one of the modern conveniences. He pauses and looks up at the jump right. drawn. Just watch the replay. Saron Black is back on the field. That's good news for LSU. And Keelan Williams comes on now. Scott comes off. Third and nine. Keelan Williams gets the play from Jarrett Lee. Third down nine. LSU tied 14-14. 29 seconds to go. Underneath, incomplete. You talk about a lack of confidence in a quarterback. Les Miles wanted the three points. They went screen, screen, and Kevin Steele told us on the phone, we play the screens very well because we man up inside. Hightower is all over the running back. He's not dropping at all. Flag was down on the play, though. Yep. Here's Penn Wagers. Disregard the ineligible downfield. The ball never crossed the line of scrimmage. So what happened is the receivers had covered up. All of them were lined up on the line of scrimmage. But since the ball didn't cross the line of scrimmage, they pick it up. That will bring Colt David, the senior place kicker, all-time scoring leader in LSU collegiate football history. And because of, of Les's reputation, Alabama should play safe. Alabama calls time. It will be a 41-yard field goal on fourth and nine. Colt David a year ago, one of the more memorable touchdowns we saw. Matt Flynn was the holder, and he flipped it over his shoulder. And Colt David scooted in for about 15 yards. And uh, here's Nick Saban on the sideline. Fourteen, fourteen. Twenty-five seconds to go. My goodness, the PA loud enough for you? Yep. <laughs> Don't miss the show USA Today. Calls Laugh Out Loud Funny, TV's number one new comedy. Worst week, Monday after two and a half in on CBS, America's most watched network. Well, perhaps they're... Uh, Running a spot for the hearing impaired on the scoreboard. 41 yard field goal to break the tie. High snap, put down. David has it on the way, and it is no good. No good. Both place kickers have missed makeable field goals today. Well, I'll tell you, Alabama has not been able to run the ball at all in this first half. 54 yards, but with this miss of a field goal, all the turnovers, all the things that happened to them, 14-14 going into the second half. First and 10, Alabama. Another look at Cole David's miss, the second, uh, and he knew immediately. So Alabama on the, uh, on the field, and they'll take a knee. We will go to halftime with these two teams tied. The top-ranked and undefeated Alabama Crimson Tide on the road with their head coach, Nick Saban, his first return to Death Valley. He actually played here as the coach, or he coached here with the Miami Dolphins in the aftermath of Hurricane 
Katrina. Let's go down to uh, Tracy, who's with Nick Saban. Coach, a tie ball game, but a start that started with three turnovers and a missed field goal. Do you think the hype and pressure of the game got to your players at all? Well, I don't know about that, but we're just not playing very well. So what we said we had to do was focus on what we need to do on the field. We're not doing a very good job. They're running the ball on us. We're not stopping the run. We're not winning up front, and we're turning the ball over and making big-time mistakes. So we need to play better in the second half. You haven't been able to rush the yard, to rush the ball just 54 yards. How do you get that part of your game going? Well, I, I, I just, they're playing some eight man fronts and they're forcing us to throw it. We got to make plays in the passing game. We loosen them up, we'll be able to run it. Thanks for your time, Coach. Right, thank you. Well, we are going to take a break from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and go back to another Louisiana native. Here's Kim Brando. Proud to be so. Thank you, Vern. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Spencer, Tony, and I will have all of today's action, including the Bulldogs, hanging tough against a bunch of feisty cats while the bad news keeps coming for Tennessee after this word from your local station. The Unit, Sundays on CBS. Welcome you back to Tiger Stadium. Death Valley, it's called, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Number one, Alabama, 15th-ranked LSU, tied at 14 as we get set for the start of the third quarter. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wolfson with you. Short guy is Trendon Holiday. Taller guy is Keelan Williams. And Lee Tiffin will kick off for the Crimson Tide. This will be taken by Keelan Williams at the two. Near side and popped as he gets near the 35. And a moment ago, Tracy with less miles. Coach, your quarterback play a concern coming in. Jarrett Lee, 63 yards and two interceptions. What can he do better in the second uh, half? The one pick really wasn't his fault. He threw it right in there and guy, you know, turned it over. You know, he can't do that. Um, we got to manage him best. We are best when he's making plays for us. Jojo LaFell, Bird, those plays are throws, you know, from our quarterback. Will we see true freshman Jordan Jefferson in the second half? There's been some talk, but not at this point. Thanks a lot, Coach. And Jared Lee starts, hands it off, left side. Scott, nice run to open this half. He gets out near the 29-yard line. Uh, how much of a concern, Gary, at this point is the play of the redshirt freshman quarterback? Huge. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll I mean, let, let's be honest. I'll L interpret L LSU has put, they scored 28 points in this half. Right. 14 for their side and 14 for the other side. I mean, the stats tell the story. LSU's been able to run the ball. Yes, they have to throw the ball to run the ball. But when they throw it, they can't turn it over. They just have to keep it loose enough to keep running the ball. This time it's Scott, and he is tackled by Corey Reamer. So I'm, I'm supposed to talk when you ask me those questions? <laughs> of course. <laughs> You're a highly paid television uh, football well, analyst. I, I, I tell you, it's tough. You're trying to beat a number one team in the country. You know, we, we asked the question, can John Parker Wilson win this thing? We're not sure. Still to be determined. We have found that Jarrett Lee could lose it. You know, they, they're trying to manage him, but not well enough yet. The running game, look at that. I think Alabama fans are shocked, and both teams have been turning it over too much for a number one or a preseason or a defending champion to win these type of games. Five turnovers first half. It's third and nine. And here's Lee. Handoff. They keep it conservative. Scott comes to the near side, and LSU will open with a three and out. Yeah, the, the advantage of defensive strategy now has shifted over to Alabama. They, believe, they do not believe that they will throw the ball in their own end. That guy didn't have much more to say than I did. <laughs> he looked a little distressed. Yeah, all right. Well, I mean, I, I, listen, we all know you can't just run the ball and win now a game. You have to throw it. But when you throw it, as, as Lou Holt said, son, you'll never throw more than seven interceptions because when you get to number six, I'm taking you out. <laughs> oh, goodness. Here's a short punt and uh, an Alabama bounce, so Arenas does not uh, come in contact with it. That was Brady Dalfrey's punt of 29 yards, nothing on the return. Nick Saban encouraged by the start 
of the Crimson Tide here in the third quarter. We're tied at 14. Florida on top of the SEC East. They play tonight at Vanderbilt. Earlier this afternoon, Tennessee lost. That in the aftermath of the decision to relieve Philip Fulmer at the end of this year. This is not an easy day for me or my family. It's not a day that I sought or accepted easily. Our Tennessee family is united in its goals but divided in the right path to get there. I love Tennessee too much to let her stay divided. It's not about, you know, it's not about just your name on a plaque somewhere at all. It's, it's, it's more about being in the trenches and fighting out. Okay. Okay. Very much. Bill Fulmer accompanied by his wife, Vicki, and athletic director Mike Hamilton by his side. That ends a 17-year run, or will, at the end of this year. Uh, his decision to go along with the request of the athletic department that he relinquish his duties. John Parker Wilson with a lot of time, and he's got a sliding Julio Jones, and the pass is in complete well the philip former resume he became head coach in 1992 but has given a lot of his life to that university one national championship that in 1998 two sec titles and you can see the 15 and 15 record in the last four years six and 14 against ranked teams everybody told me when i came to this conference that when you go watch tennessee play they're very undisciplined in practice found that furthest from the truth. When I went and watched them practice, they were very disciplined. They just don't have the talent level they had before. On second and ten, John Parker Wilson. And did he get the pass away, or is it a fumble? It's going to be intentional grounded. Right. Marlon Favorite, un untouched. Well, one of those, this was supposed to be a screen pass, a very conservative play. They're going to try to go right back to Coffee on the play after they fake it to him, and Favorite gets right in there and forces the play before there was any chance. Great job by Kirsten Pittman to read the play and not allow the pass. Now, if you're the coordinator for Alabama, knowing the problems that LSU is having at quarterback, you're going. are you going to play conservative? We will disregard the foul. That was a receiver. Well, I, I thought it would be possible that he was in the grasp there is what I was thinking. There was. it. Coffee is going to be in the picture. Watch Kirsten Pittman right there. He's got coverage. But I thought that was either in the grasp or grounding. He was not trying to complete that ball. That is the third flag that has been picked up this afternoon. Let's just go back. Let's just go back to the strategy here if you're Alabama. Do you force it, or do you wait for another mistake from LSU? Third and ten here. John Parker Wilson comes to his left. Let's it go deep, and that was incomplete. He was trying to signal Marquise Mays to go deep. Well, let's go back to New York and Tim. All right, Vern, Penn State leads Iowa now. Derek Williams is going to take the snap, go straight ahead, nine yards for the touchdown, single wing action. They got ten points off Iowa turnovers, leading by nine now. And if these two scores hold up, Wake Forest and Florida State will be tied atop the ACC Atlantic. Wake holding the tiebreaker. Back to you. He's going to kick it. All right, Tim, it'll be fourth down and three and out for Alabama to open this third quarter. Here's P.J. Fitzgerald. Holiday drifts over to his left. Uh, wonderful kick. Sure was. Out of bounds at the 16-yard line. 16-yard line. You know what LSU needs right now, Vern? The Wildcat formation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if Charles Scott can throw the ball. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be back at tailback when we return. From your living rooms or restaurants, you have joined part of the largest crowd to ever watch a game. Inside this stadium, 93,039. 
Capacity listed as 92,400. And flying high above MetLife providing aerial coverage of today's game. Beautiful pictures. 14-14, LSU with the ball at their own 16. Jarrett Lee, who is 4 of 16, throwing it so far. His, this one is out and complete. No, incomplete at the 26-yard line. Chris Mitchell, number 86, the intended receiver. So how do you manage this if you're Les Miles? You've lost your backup quarterback, Andrew Hatch. Your starting quarterback is a, you know, now the guys on your team are starting to look at you and coach and say, you know, coach, you've benched a few of us for not producing. How come we still got that guy out there? And now your backup quarterback is a true freshman. It gets really problematic if you're less miles. The second down and 10. Lee, quick flip. Oh, boy, he's struggling. Brandon LaFell. He's really struggling. They're trying to find ways for Lee to gain his confidence. Two throws to the outside. Didn't even get a spiral that time. See, now it's third and long again. And you're backed up inside the 20. Can you really, you've already scored 14 points for the other team. Can you really take the chance again? We'll see. See, here's the problem. Can't beat him if you don't try something. Exactly. But the option is a true freshman who's thrown one pass this year. Talented, yes, but. Now, they're going to punt, aren't they? Yeah. At least. Keelan Williams, that'll uh, give them five yards, and they'll bring up fourth and down for the second time. Three and out for LSU's offense in the third quarter. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's been tough. You know, you're, you're playing in a tough conference in a wide-open offense maybe two years before you should because Ryan Perilou should be here right now, and you're playing against one of the best masterminds in college football on the other side. That is a point, isn't it? Yes. That is Nick I mean, Saban absolutely. over there. Absolutely. Yes. The guy was good in the NFL, let alone here. <laughs> on fourth down, down from the punt, Javier Arenas drifts back. Nice punt. This one, a fair catch taken by Arenas at the 31-yard line. 47-yard punt from Dalfrey. Nothing on the return. Not that Alabama's moved the ball all the way so far. Monday on CBS, Jake to military school. Allen back with his ex. A new two-and-a-half men you never thought you'd see. Monday at 9, 8 Central on CBS America's Most Watched Network. Now Red Lobster presents today's scholar-athlete from LSU, Brett Helms, a three-point grade point average, major in business manager. He graduated last May. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to Louisiana State University's General Scholarship Fund. Brett Helms from Stuttgart, Arkansas. His dad, Ph.D. from LSU in the uh, rice business back in Stuttgart. First down and 10. Draw play. Coffee, not much. You can see why LSU was confident about this matchup. To start the game, Alabama ran the ball early seven times for 48 yards, almost 50 yards. Since then, they've run the ball seven times for five yards. Wow. That defensive line, those big studs, are comfortable mashing Alabama. I've been saying it all week. This is the first team that could match mass to mass against Alabama. Second down, officially nine. Crimson Tide with three wides to the right. They come near side, and it's caught out of the backfield. This is Coffee, and he's got a first down at the 43-yard line. 93,000 plus on hand. This is the largest crowd to ever watch a football game in this 84 year old stadium. And it's 14 14, early third quarter. Alabama went on top. LSU got two touchdowns to take a 14 7 lead. And then a 56 yard interception return for a TD by Rashad Johnson tied it right before half. First and 10. Coffee, left side. Well, if you well, are a connoisseur of turnovers, this is your day. Yeah. Now, here, here's my thought. Hard to believe this is the defending national champions against the number one team in the country. 
but it has really been a, a, a sloppy football game. Both teams have made a living winning the championship last year on taking care of the ball, and have gotten Alabama has gotten into the position of being number one by taking care of the ball, and has been very, very sloppy. And right now, short of the 50, a second down and five, John Parker Wilson had one of the touchdowns on a one-yard quarterback sneak. Straight back, goes right. He's got a man open all by himself as Julio Jones, as Chris Hawkins got uh, you, 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 really taken Vern, care of. Vern, you, you can't teach this stuff. Just watch this guy set up the defensive back. Quick release to the outside. Watch. Remember we were saying double move? Quick release to the outside. That's a double move. And look at that comeback. Absolutely falls down to Hawkins. Remember I said we had to do something as a double move. Started out at him. Quick burst to the outside and then stopped. That's NFL-ish as a freshman. And that's a game of 19. Here's a play up the middle. It's coffee again. He runs into Kirsten Pittman, number 49. Chad Jones is there to help with the tackle. Glenn Coffey, leading carrier, ground gainer for this Alabama team, had an earlier effort this season of 218 yards. That was against Kentucky. And this afternoon, 9 for 61. Not well, bad. No, but. no, but the two LSU backs are in the 60s, the 70s, and 80s. That's the surprising part. But now this drive, it looks like the real Alabama offense. Second down and four. Safety comes up to help run support, and that leaves an opening on the left side. It's Coffee to the five and out of bounds at the three-yard line. Uh, let's run the ball behind Art Shell, Gene Upshaw, and Jim Otto to the left. Andre Smith, Mike Johnson, and Anton Caldwell. Go to the left side, and then you got those two big tight ends, Travis McCall and Nick Walker. That is some nice, well-blocked football right there. Well, you realize you, you uh, show your age when you go back 35 well, years those and are, reference the Oakland Raiders. Those are wonderful football players. Uh. <laughs> First and goal. Left again. Coffee. Touchdown, Alabama. Left again. Nice to see Andre Smith in the picture. The All-American left tackle. Unless your tight ends do the job. Nick Walker, Travis McCall, great job. And big Andre Smith just follow number 71. Doesn't matter sometimes. If you're good, you can impose your will. That's the phrase of the day. Who will impose their will? Lee Tiffin for the extra point. Up and perfect. But really the first score for Bama today. Yes. Here's the toss. Glenn Coffey, junior for Walton Beach, Florida. 21 14, Alabama. All right, I'm going to admit at the outset that this is a groaner. Okay? This is a good one. It appears to me in the middle of the Mississippi that the Crimson Tide are turning things around. <laughs> That's big Andre Smith, Mike Johnson, the two tugs turning it around, aren't they? Look at how cool that is. You well, need to watch. Uh, you're not going to be able to hide anymore if you're LSU. You're going to have to just uh, tee it up and play football now. Seems to me that Jarrett Lee's more comfortable that way, but he's made mistakes that way, too. The SEC's a bit down at quarterback this year, Vern. Struggling at quarterback. Here's the kick. Holiday coming right. Nice job of avoiding the block in the back. Tyrone King with the tackle. Well, the last time Alabama played as a number one team in the country, all the way back to October 27, 1980, Ronald Reagan had not yet been elected president. The American hostages in Iran had been held for 359 days. There was a 28-game win streak for Bear Bryant's team. They lost the next week, 6-3 to three to Mississippi State, and Nick Saban now the only coach to lead top-ranked Alabama in a regular season game. First down and 10, besides Bear Bryant, obviously. Here's Jared Lee back to throw. Left side. 
And that one is complete at the 31 yard line. Brandon LaFell in front of Kareem Jackson. Well, here it was this time. Alabama lined up almost in a nine man front and played bump and run to the outside. Kareem Jackson's going to try to follow LaFell all over the field. Look, he doesn't even look back. He just shadows him. Ball thrown to the outside. They are challenging Jarrett Lee to beat him. And they're doing it with man to man defense, eight in the box. That is the first catch of the evening for Brandon LaFell. 7.45 to go. Third quarter, Lee comes and LaFell can't hang on to this one. He is popped in the back. It is an incomplete pass. Javier Arenas hit him in the back. Well, you know when there's two different things, little bail technique that's called. You line up and pump and run, and then you bail out of it into a zone. Arenas goes. you got two things to do. Deny the ball, number one. Make the hit, number two. Wrap up, number three. Really tough numbers for Jared Lee. He's now 5 of 20. Two interceptions, one of which became the sixth interception off his right arm, returned for a touchdown. He has to hit his next 10 to get to 50%. Yes. Play fake. Looks deep, fires deep. The foul is there. Jackson drives him out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Well, there's one. Again, first down pass, plenty of time. If you've got a quarterback, there's no choice now. They can't run the ball. Alabama's saying if you don't throw it, you ain't going to do it. This is the play coming way across like this. Watch it. Just cross, 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 playing combo coverage to the weak side of the field. Allows the trailing receiver to get over to the opposite side. That's a gain of 29 for the Tigers. Now they come LaFell, three in a row. He's got a little help. Breaks a tackle and is inside the 35-yard line. Marcel Darius with the tackle. Right now, LSU is saying, will Jared Lee of Auburn show up and right the ship? Started out so poorly against Auburn and find his find his game late in that game. Yes, that's right. Yep. Started that one with a pass return for an interception in the first half. Missed his first five passes. Now, Chris Mitchell goes wide to the left. Second down. Three. Scott. Short of the first down. Now, remember that uh, Saturday night game? Jared Lee came on for Andrew Hatch, and this was the pass. Returned for the touchdown, but he came back and hit the game winner. Chris Mitchell. And then on third and two, here was LaFell, right side. Yeah, that was a little fool's goal in that game for LSU in that one. They thought that was a big win. It turned out to be not that big. Third and two. Give it to the fullback. And I, the, the spot we're looking uh, at, no, I don't no, think no, he's so. got it. Well, less is fourth down less. Yes, he is. You just got to believe that his... What he's been getting out of his quarterback, he has to roll the dice here. Stopped up inside. For this season, three of nine I'll on fourth down attempts. Excuse Brent me, Helms doing a good job on, on Cody. Now, you know, he's probably, obviously, he's not 100%. He's doing a good job inside on him. Now they will bring the chain from the far side of the field. What, like a football short? Yep. Yep. Not that much. Truck just told me Ryan Miller's in its center right now. It is. 63, Ryan Miller in there, turning Cody around. Nice job. LSU, fourth and a foot, trailing by seven. 5.43 to go, third quarter. Just, they're going to give to Hester, you know that. <laughs> Hester's out west. Oh, that's right. The last year they would have. They overload to the left. They give it to the fullback, and he's got the first down. Quinn Johnson, a rare carry. That's only number six. There's the seven this year. Alabama actually thought they stopped this play. They thought the tailback had the ball. Cody ran off the field like he stopped it. He didn't know that the fullback had the ball, and fourth down, Les gets one. 
First down 10 LSU at the 29 yard line. Charles Scott, 17 carries, 81 yards so far in the game. Alabama has not allowed a runner over 100 yards this season. Here's Scott, and he certainly won't get there on that play. Well, Lorenzo Washington got in the backfield that time and kind of caused the cutback, but that time the Alabama front kind of just attacked. They didn't read two gap. They kind of attacked the play. Marquise Johnson, number 24, with a tackle. Ben Jarvis Green Ellis of Ole Miss was the last one. Richard Dixon fell down that time, slipped coming out of it. That was not Jared Lee's fault that time. Dixon stumbled coming out of his route. That leads him with a second down and ten. Third, third down, I think. Defense! Defense! Tenth play of this current drive after they fell behind 21-14. And this is where Nick's at his best. Probably the third best third down co defensive coach in college football. He and Kevin Steele. Got to give Kevin a little credit here. Defensive coordinator. Coming at him. They sure are. From the corner. And the contact is made as the pass goes. And it's intercepted. Picked off by Rolando McLean. Ali Sharif, number 26, made the contact on the blitz. It went straight up in the air. And Alabama intercepts McLean. This, this is a big mistake for Jared Lee. You've got to read the man off the slot. That's your responsibility. This man right here is your responsibility. He's on block. Look, the tackle's going to come here. It's your responsibility to see it and get rid of it. The back takes the other guy blitzing. The quarterback's job is one of the two people. The back takes the one to the left. The quarterback takes the blitzing person to the right. Nick Saban dialed it up. He's the best nickel coach in the game. And on the turnover, Lee, another interception. That's his third in this ball game. First down 10, Alabama at their own 46. Let me say Pete Carroll's pretty good at it too, by the way. You're right. <laughs> Ankle tackle made by Jai Eugene. Now let's go back to the studio for this Liberty Mutual update. Here's Tim. All right, Vern. Because of the credibility issue for Penn State, well, this is the reason why. Against Iowa, a mediocre Iowa team, Sean Green's having a good day. He goes in from six yards out. It's now 23-21, Nittany Lions. And earlier today, Tony Barnhart said that there could be three 11-1 teams in the Big 12. Oklahoma doing their part, blowing out Texas A&M. Back to you. Uh, it's that pink locker room in Iowa. <laughs> Second down and seven. Here's John Parker Wilson back. Pumps goes deep right side, and he's got a man open. There's a little contact ruled incidental, and it's an incomplete pass. Julio Jones had a stride on Chris Hawkins. I tell you, it was, a, it was a double move. They finally gave Hawkins the double move, but Hawkins does a nice job of not panicking was in pretty good phase. I mean, a ball thrown 45 yards downfield, you can't blake it that any much more than that. And Julio Jones, they kind of went a stop and go on the play, and Hawkins did his about as well as you could. Third and seven. Hawkins had a great game. You know, uh, that's a tough matchup out there, but he's holding his own. He's got him again on third down. Hawkins lays off Jones. They tried to draw play, and Raheem Alam says, uh-uh. He got help from Kirsten Pittman, fourth down, after the interception. Actually, it was a great call by the LSU defense. They blitzed right into the play, and that's what really stopped the play. I think Perry Riley came inside, and Andre Smith couldn't take both of them. Great call from the LSU defense, Mallory and Favita. <laughs> That's a very pretty picture here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. P.J. Fitzgerald, Trendon Holiday is back at the 15-yard line. 21-14. Short punt, not a good one. But it, uh, no, it's not a good one. Period. 
21-14, a 32-yard punt next Saturday. We'll have a double header for you Saturday. Notre Dame against Navy. That gets a noon start. And then uh, our crew will be somewhere, either in Gainesville or Tuscaloosa or Auburn, South Carolina, Florida, or Mississippi State, Alabama, or Georgia, Auburn. That's the second game of the doubleheader next Saturday at 3.30. Ryan Miller remains in at center, first down and 10. <laughs> More importantly, number 12 remains in at quarterback. Are you advocating a change? I, you know, I've been there. I've, I've thrown multiple interceptions in a game. Sometimes when there's no backup, they're stuck with you. Yeah. And Brett Helms injured. Let's get more from uh, Tracy Wilson. That's right. Ryan Miller will probably take over at center for the rest of the game. Brett Helms got hit in the head. He is currently in the locker room being evaluated. His return is doubtful. Thank you, Trace. Second down, seven. Keenan Williams now 78 yards in this ball game. Scott with 82. Leave a throw. Left side. Got it. Demetrius Bird with the first down at the 38 yard line. Demetrius Bird. First down. 12-yard game, first and 10. Almost wish I had a one of those pass chart things. In retrospect, I could have had it if I wanted. I just had to ask for it. Most of, seems to me, of Jarrett Lee's successful throws are almost outside the numbers. Either right or left, it doesn't matter. He's not successful over the middle. He's only successful wide. First down and 10, and the handoff goes to Kieran Williams. About four yards. Why do you think that? Is? It's easier to there's, it's easier to read out there. You you don't have to you only have to see one half because the guys from out of bounds can't intercept it. So you got that friendly sideline to throw to out there. That's how Gary is trying to Gary Croton is trying to manage his quarterback here by giving them the throws to the outside. Second and seven, 21-14. Final 90 seconds, third quarter, from the spread. Blitz, McCain coming, screen pass. Demetrius Bird popped hard after the catch. I'll tell you, do you think Alabama put some time on the wide receiver screens? It is a staple of LSU, and they saw this one coming all the way. And just ate it up that time, Arenas just followed him in and made the play. Oh, third and long again. <laughs> On third down conversions today. LSU 3 of 14. Scott's in. Last one was an interception with a rush, with a pass rush. Remember the blitz? Yep. This, time, this time three man line. See if they drop eight. They will. Lee goes deep right side. There's Chris Mitchell. He can't oh, hang man. on. Oh, baby. That was a busted assignment for Alabama also. Safety had no reason to hang in the middle of the field. And Mitchell should have made this play. Someone needed to help the quarterback. Quarterback makes perfect throw. Safety takes a bad angle, and Woodall was very, very lucky there. Can't throw it any better than that. And where was that ball thrown, Fern? Outside the numbers. Yes, it was. Yeah. So instead of a touchdown or a first and goal, it's fourth down and Javier Arenas back to return the punt. Slips and falls. Alabama will take over at the eight yard line. Well, Nick Saban is in his second year at Alabama, of course, after two years at Miami. He's trying to join this list of coaches going all the way back to 1900 who won a national title in their second year. Look at Fielding Yost at Michigan, Pop Warner, Paul Brown at Ohio State, Switzer and Stoops at Oklahoma, Jim Tressel, Ohio State, most recently Urban Meyer at Florida. This crowd of 93,000 trying to urge... The Tigers on. Review. 
This might be a spot. And review where he slipped down, where his yeah. knee came down. I, I think Nick is saying, come on now. You had the whole time out to do that. Yep. I call a play that I like, and now you're going to stop it. Yeah, it is the it is the spot that's under review. Here's Arenas. About on the seven and a half yard line, it should be. Mm -hmm. Somehow that was translated to the ten yard line. Well, I, I, I'm not sure if he'd take forward progress, but you know, I mean, where he fell down, you know, he could have caught his balance and started running. So. It's a little above my pay grade on this one. I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. After review, Vinny Avenue shows that the ball is down at the seven yard line. The ball being reset at the seven. First down. Maybe not. <laughs> First down. I think we both saw that. Yep. So from the seven. That was the best punt, the, the deepest punt of the day for LSU. They've been missing them all day. Coffee. Two, maybe three yards. Looks like they'll spot this one at the nine. Tremaine Johnson, number 47, makes the stop. We'll put up four fingers. Got an 80-yard walk to the other end. Nick Walker leads the way. That's the end of three. With the score 21-14. Tampa. We'll return to Tiger Stadium right after this word from your local station. Jacob Caprera is there to uh, make the tackle number 54 who's getting uh, considerable playing time after that great punt by Dalfrey and uh, I kind of thought midway through the third that Alabama had grabbed hold of this one I'm not so sure now yeah we have a lot of time left and, and through the whole commercial break the LSU crowd the record crowd was trying to pump their team there they can see they need help the quarterbacks not doing it the receivers are dropping his so the crowd says we'll help they want to beat Nick Saban. I mean, this is as good as you get. This is going to be a great fourth quarter. Well, it has a reputation of being one of the loudest places in all of college football. No reason to doubt that right now. This will be close for the first down. It was Coffey. Harry Coleman made the tackle. Well, one of the unusual parts of this team is that the road team, this series, the road team has won 26 of the last 38 meetings. The home team has won consecutive games once since 1969. Well, we talked about it again. I, don't, I guess it's beating a dead horse, but kind of strikes me. Imposing your will. That was one of the biggest first downs of this football game. 92,000 people in their ear the whole two-minute commercial break. And Alabama comes off their own seven-yard line to make a first down. And Mark Ingram, the freshman, is now the tailback. John Parker Wilson, they hand it to Ingram. He gets... A yard out to the 20-yard line. Raheem Alem, number 84. You never know for sure. But if you're Alabama right now, you're Nick Saban. Obviously, you're playing for a chance to play in the national championship. Remember this. The number one team on this date, nine out of ten times, ends up in the championship game. Okay? So I look at the scoreboard if I'm Nick Saban with that quarterback and say, if I could put any points on the board, I can win this game. Glenn Coffey is now the tailback. Play fake. No, they handed it to Coffey. 
and he doesn't get much. He's across the 20 to the 21. Tyson Jackson makes the stop. Number one team in week three of the BCS standings has made the title nine out of ten years. Alabama, so, you see, with all that chaos, yeah, hits still. Right. I mean, you got to be a good team to be when you start November, the middle of November. If you're number one, you're a good football team. And Alabama ranked number one this week in every poll in the country. Senior quarterback on the road, third and eight. No blitz. John Parker Wilson, incomplete, intended. For Julio Jones and Patrick Peterson, number seven, knocked it loose. Well, bad throw by John Parker Wilson. And can anybody help out the quarterback for LSU? Patrick Peterson has to catch this ball. I don't know. Did Julio touch it or not? I could not tell if he tipped it. He did tip it. Uh, well, that, that was, was, we won't blame that on Pat, but that was a, not a very good throw. And Alabama was lucky that Julio touched it. And here's P.J. Fitzgerald. For the fifth time this evening, Trendon Holiday always dangerous at the 40. But if you chase it over his head, he becomes less dangerous. Ooh, this punting in this football game it has been magnificent for both sides. Simple physics, even yeah. I understand that. Fitzgerald did a great job of angling his kicks. Holiday has not been a factor. 53 yard or no return, can't do better than that. It's time for our Geico scoring recap. Alabama got on the board first. John Parker Wilson, a one-yard touchdown run after an interception. Only a 15-yard drive. Then uh, Jared Lee, a 30-yard toss to Demetrius Bird for the touchdown 7-7. LSU then took the lead. And they got it on this run over right guard by Charles Scott. 30 yards. It was 14-7. They appeared in control as we neared the end of the half. But then this interception by Rashad Johnson, he returned it 54 yards for the touchdown. That tied it 14-14. And in the third quarter, Glenn Coffey's three-yard run got us to where we stand. 21-14, Alabama. Jared Lee still the quarterback. Tracy Wilson reporting that he might have uh, injured his right forearm when he was almost sacked by Ali Sharif a moment ago. But he's still in there. And off. Scott comes left. And gang tackled as he gets to the 25 yard line. Gary, take us back. Yeah, we, we go, let's go back to the last interception. Remember Ali Sharif coming off the slot right here. Hits Jared Lee just as he cocks his arm. Misread by Lee. And as he puts his left arm on Lee's right wrist and forearm, that's uh, where he got him. He's got a, got a feeling that. Less and Gary got to shake it up a little bit. I, I just wouldn't be surprised now if we don't see Jordan Jefferson try to come in and run an option or a bootleg and do something different. Here. Second down, 11 after the one yard loss. Here's Lee, right side, incomplete. All right. Brandon LaFell, the intended receiver, and Jared Lee now 9 of 28. Last eight possessions. Not much to highlight in that uh, in that list. I remember having a couple Goodness. like that. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta hide your eyes when you look at those. And he's 0 for 8 on third downs. Last two times it was a blitz, and then they dropped into 8 deep. Boy, I tell you right now, there Jarrett Lee has no idea what he's getting here. He's getting a safety blitz. Yes. Johnson comes. Lee goes right. Fires it. Got it for the first down at the 37-yard line. Terrence Tolliver, only his seventh catch of the year. And that's a gain of 12 on third down. Well, it's man-to-man -man coverage to the top up here. Right there. And there's the catch. On first down, Scott. No. Big Cody. 
think you know his story. He started out at junior college in Mississippi, didn't have the grades to play until he was a senior. Here's uh, the other large man on this field. This is Herman Johnson. Ron Black left the game. He's come back. Brett Helms left the game. He didn't come back. And now big Herman Johnson is down. We said it was going to be real mainly, mainly football. But it's those plays from behind that always happens. Yeah, that looked innocent enough. Yeah, didn't I, it? I think it was his left wrist. Somebody from behind, I think Helmet hit his wrist. Herman Johnson at 351. Terrence Cody at 365. Started to continue the well for the 97th time. I will tell you that Herman Johnson was the largest baby ever born in Louisiana. Okay. We've used that note since he was uh, a toddler. Weighed in at 15 pounds plus. Terrence Cody in junior college last year weighed 411. Here's Jared Lee rolling right off the back foot. It's caught. Another first down. For LSU at the 48-yard line. This was a very dangerous play right here. They did not, LSU did not get the look they wanted. They rolled to the outside, but they throw right into double coverage in a roll-up zone. That could have been anything. Look at corner in front, safety behind. That could have been a disaster. Zipped in there nicely, but that was not what they were looking for. Tolliver with a second catch in this drive. First down and 10. Test the middle and the yards on the ground have become extremely difficult to attain. Yeah, two big throws, though. Two big first down throws by Lee. It's hanging tough. Now, remember, Alabama has been shaky in the second half and fourth quarter games before. They're having trouble finishing games. Ten minutes to go. First down at the 25. Outside, outside, outside this time. Nobody in the middle of the field. No jam from Arena. Serena's was inside blitzing or showing the blitz. And Johnson did not get over there in time. Another throw. You gotta like the Moxie and Lee. That's what I said. I mean, you know, it's. I mean, it's tough throwing interceptions, everybody talking about you, having your teammates looking at you, and keep firing. LaFell, the leading uh, receiver on this team coming in. Four catches now, all in this half. They'll run the ball to the left side. Unsuccessful. Penn State. Let's get uh, an update from Tim Brandon. All right, all you one-loss teams, get in line. Lend me your ear. This is Daniel Murray, a 31-yarder, one tick remaining, but it looks like Penn State, unbeaten, is going to go down. Get ready, Texas, Florida, Oklahoma, USC, all of the anointed one-loss teams. A BCS mess, Vern. <laughs> Timmy, I wish you had a passion for all this. <laughs> it happens every year, doesn't it? Second and eight. Oh, it's a wildcat. It's uh, Richard Murphy up the middle. It is the Wildcat. Or the Wild Rebel. Or the now the Wild Tiger. Exactly. First we, down. We asked Les, would you consider using the Wildcat because you're struggling at quarterback? And he said, you see how they stopped Ole Miss? And I said, yes. He doesn't tell us everything, does he? No. <laughs> no. That was a nice change up. Jared Lee back in under center. First down from the 15-yard line. LSU trails by seven. Lee looks to go to the corner. He's caught and dropped. Bobby Greenwood gets the tackle, number 93. Well, Demetrius Bird got jammed on the play that time because it was a roll-up double coverage. Alabama kind of, excuse me, LSU came with an unbalanced line trying to put a gimmick play that time. And Bird didn't get off the line of scrimmage. Now, on first down, quarterback's got to throw it away. 
First down, give me second and ten. But Bird did not fight hard enough on the play. Demetrius Bird. Here's Bird left side. Second down and 12. Blitz coming. Lee rolls right. Pulls up. Goes in the corner. Diving try. Catch is made. It's Terrence Tolliver who has come alive here in the fourth quarter. Man to man. The M.O. on Nick Saban. He's going to play bump and run to the outside. And Tolliver has come alive because he's come into the game. Terrence Tolliver has caught three. It's third down and one. Penn State is a final. Iowa wins it by one. Give it to the fullback. Down at the one. Quinn Johnson. Well, he deserves it. Bending the football. Feed the guy the football that has been knocking linebackers down all game. His knee comes down before he stretches it out. Good call. Great job by LSU. 13th play of the drive. Right. Dvorak is in at a guard. They give it to the fullback, and I don't believe he got it. Nope. Again, trying to slip it to the fullback. Tailback goes wide. Herman Johnson, by the way, is back in the lineup. It was his left wrist. They taped it. Here's Quinn Johnson. It's second down from just outside the one. Scott, the deep back. Scott. Touchdown, Tigers. mystery ride just inside the left upright and our quiet guys whistling a little different attitude this game has the same feel as last year's game doesn't it yep back and forth remember it was a fourth down play to early do set and then the sack late javier arenas ran a punt return back tied under seven minutes The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Chick-fil-A. John Hancock. Wrangler. And by Applebee's. Record crowd on hand by the Banks of Mississippi enjoying this one. And coming up later in the game, the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. What a drive by LSU. 74 yards, 14 plays. Remember when Derry Beckwith told us yesterday that he loved last year's game from warm-ups until the clock split at 0-0-0. This is another game just like it. As a player, you can't have it better than this. Here is the kick by Jasper. Arenas. To the 37-yard line. Ron Brooks with the tackle. Well, let's bring you up to date on the BCS. Alabama's tied there, number one. Texas Tech at home tonight against Oklahoma State. Penn State falls on a last-second field goal. Texas defeated Baylor. Florida at Vandy tonight. Oklahoma winning big. Southern Cal, Cal against uh, California. <laughs> Utah came from behind to defeat TCU. Oh, it's going to be oh, yeah. some kind of a... Remember all the stuff that happened last year. Yeah. First down, 10. Crimson Tide. John Parker Wilson. 
flips it out. It's caught by Coffey. He's up to the 45-yard line. I've been talking all year that one of these games, John Parker Wilson is going to have to take his team and win a game. Now, remember a few years back, Craig Krenzel kind of was the manager of that team at Ohio State. But oh, in Purdue that year, he had to throw that holy Buckeye pass to win it on fourth down. These quarterbacks, sooner or later, have to win a game to win the national championship. On second down and two, Wilson hands it off left side. Coffee. He's got a first down, and he is across midfield. It'll be first down, Alabama. Well, you know, you talk about John Parker Wilson. We've gotten to know him very well. Right. He's been the starter, grew up idolizing Alabama, played at Hoover, Suburban Birmingham. He holds almost all the records, Gary, right. for Alabama, but no one ever thinks to include him in a list of great well, Alabama quarterbacks. He reminds me of Chris Leak when Leak was at Florida. Remember that last year? Now, he, did, he needed help from Tebow that year. But to fulfill it, to do it all, he had to get to that championship game. I think the same for John Parker. First and ten. Blitz coming. Wilson still has it. Looks right. And he'll hang on and get out of bounds at the 42-yard line. It was Tyson Jackson who chased him there. With help from Perry Riley, that's a gain of six. It's a big play right here. Nothing happened. Nobody to throw to. John Parker Wilson gets to the outside. And a really nice pull off that time by Perry Riley, number 56. Because a hit there would have tacked down 15 yards and got him inside field goal range. Second and four. Coffee has gone over 100 yards. He is the lone setback. And he gets the ball, goes left, has room. Kevin Shepard, Kelvin Shepard knocks him down, but he gets a first down. He was oh so close to getting a huge gain. He picked up eight. Great call here by Jim McElwine, offensive coordinator for Alabama. Safety blitz. Danny McCray is going to come from this side. Balls run to the right. He caught him exactly what he wanted in this offense. Here come McCray late. There goes the ball the other way. Positive play. Another first down. Alabama playing as a number one in regular season, first time in 28 yards, 28 years, trying to keep that position. Coffee. I mean, they're going left every play. Oh, they sure are. Jeez, man. <laughs> Three Hall of Famers, remember on the Raiders? Yeah. Otto, Upshaw, and Shells. 35 years ago. Yep. We're going left. Favorite people. <laughs> Coffee going left. Sounds like the election last Tuesday. That's right, <laughs> for sure. Behind the big guys, Smith, Johnson, and Caldwell. Hank Stram, they're going left. They're going left. <laughs> we got something working left, Jack. <laughs> Parker Wilson. Oh, gosh. The route was run so well. Yep. And the pass was to the right. Yeah, it was, it, he threw it a little early this time. And Julio Jones did not have enough time. Threw inside. Jai Eugene this time on coverage. Another stop route. Ball thrown inside. And uh, that time Julio Jones did not have enough time to adjust to it. Lee Tippin has not had a great year, the field goal kicker. He's missed one in this ball game. His long was the first he tried this year. 54 yards against Clemson. But they would like to get a bunch more. Clock's coming down on them a little bit. No, they're okay. Blitz. John Parker Wilson. He's had all kinds of room. Oh, my goodness. To the 10. To the 5. Coming back. Flag down at the 35. Alabama unaware. Holding. Crimson Tide. Coming back. Saw it all the way. You called it, Vern. All-out blitz on this one. Come inside. What they call holding inside on the play. I think it was right tackle Drew Davis. On the offense. Number 71. Ooh. Ooh. Boy. I saw the flag. The official tossed it right in the middle of this play. Was it on Andre Smith? 
Left tackle. Comes I think it outside. Might be Mike Johnson. Oh, no. Just a little bit of a jersey. I, I, I don't know, but you could see it was called. The umpire threw it into the middle of the stack. Couldn't have been coffee. Could have been. All I know is it could have been a touchdown. I thought <laughs> I heard an eight. Might so have I went right to Mike Johnson. It could have been coffee. As the timeout is taken by Alabama, right. we'll sort it out. The timeout taken with 3.10 to go. It was Andre Smith. The one and the nine looked the same to the umpire. Watch right up here. Watch the hand go up to the jersey just as Raheem Alem comes inside. Watch it right there. He's got the jersey right there. There's the call. We looked almost the whole commercial. It was a proper call, Alabama fans. That is only the second penalty on Alabama today. It wipes out a touchdown, one of 32 yards. We're still tied, and it's third and 18. John Parker Wilson, Julio Jones, can't hang on, fourth down. It's called pressure. It's called the pressure of the moment. Julio Jones snapping all those balls in September and October, but now is number one. He's starting to struggle. That's a drop. And it probably would have been enough. Wouldn't have been a first down, no. but it would have been a field goal. And now P.J. Fitzgerald is on. Instead of Holiday, it's Chad Jones. He's back there for the second time. He's at the 10-yard line. Holiday has been ineffective. Here's the pooch punt. Fair catch. Jones at the 14-yard line. Two minutes, 58 seconds left. Number one on the line. Twenty-one all, two fifty-eight to go. Before a crowd of ninety-three thousand, this game very eerily similar to the game between them a year ago. Right on their march to win a national championship, they had to win on the road, and the defense made the play. Under three minutes, Chad Jones gets the sack. Almost the same spot on the field. Can Alabama's defense win a game for him on their march to try to win a national championship? On the last touchdown drive, Jarrett Lee was four of five. First down and ten here. Ryan Miller continues at center. Snaps it back. Handoff. Keenan Williams comes left. Gains four. Rashad Johnson made the tackle on Keelan Williams. It was Rashad Johnson who had an interception return for a touchdown, 54 yards, right before halftime. Williams again. That's a 21. As LSU keeps it very close to the best. And Barksdale's down now. This is the fourth different offensive lineman for LSU to go down in this football game. The only one that hasn't gone down now is Lyle Hitt, number 65. Right tackle, Joseph Barksdale. Way out here. Again, I think uh, Dieterich falls on him. Yeah. Looks like that's who it was. So Keelan Williams stopped at the 22-yard line. Rem remember earlier in the game, in these situations, the option was bailing out LSU in this situation. Now, they don't like Jared Lee on the option, but it worked a couple times early. Might they come back to something where they get the ball? Because they're going to have a tough time, I think, just ramming it down this Alabama defense. 2.20 to go in this one when we are through tonight on CBS. CSI New York without a trace and 48 hours mystery. Parksdale will limp off with uh, out assistance and Ernest McCoy, number 77, takes his spot at right tackle. So on third down and three, LaFell and Bird are both to the right. 
Tolliver is bottom of the screen to the left. And the running back again is Charles Scott. Third down three. Blitz. Pass is incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Richard Dixon. Fourth down. I just really had the feeling that that might have been a time. You lost your right tackle. You have your center in. You know that Saban's going to come from a blitz and make you throw it quickly. You know, maybe an option play would have cut a guy out of the corner and made the play. Now, Alabama, I think, got what they want. They're going to get the ball in great field position. In his career, Javier Arenas with four punt returns for touchdowns. One this year. Hasn't been that effective this afternoon. And a flag. It, it, it better not be on Alabama. Or that guy's going to have trouble. After the snap. Ball start. Number 22 on offense. You're right. 35 yards. Down on I, would, I wouldn't even want to run over to the sideline. I'm not playing. <laughs> Your seat on the airplane <laughs> right. has been filled. <laughs> Lee Tiffin warming up. It was Ryan Baker on the punt team who moves. And so now, after the penalty... And they're resetting the game clock for 2:10. And remember, Lee Tiffin has his own nightmares. Two years ago, Arkansas, Arkansas game when it was just his really first break-in game. Now he's grown up a lot since then, but we all have those nightmares. A tough one against Kentucky at home this year. He's missed one in this ball game for the season. And here is a uh, well returnable punt. Arena at the 36. to the 41 yard line Carnell Hatcher made the tackle in, in that funny word my, my inclination was that it was a pretty good punt pretty good coverage by Jones and arenas just he's good the guy's good I mean he he's so quick his hop is so good I mean minute 58 you got the ball you got a chance to win a national championship two more home games for Alabama you don't get it any better than this you've been Struggling for two years with John Parker Wilson as a senior quarterback. You got a chance to win a football game Lee Tiffin is a junior his dad one of the great heroes for Alabama Van Tiffin here's the one it's coffee to the 34 the clock shows 151 and running Alabama two timeouts remaining Again Lee Tiffin's long of the year was 54 yards Nick Saban said, go out and kick it. That was in the opener against Clemson. Subsequently, he's missed six. He's 13 for 19. For the year. Second down. Coffee. Struggles to the 31. That was a great run. That was a great two or three yard run right there by Coffee. Saban wants a timeout. Whoops. Oh, I'm surprised. Why would you take a timeout with so early in the play clock? He had a sense of urgency. I'll give you that. Time called. Less than a minute to go. A moment ago, Nick Saban. Gary, I think, realizing he had the wrong personnel right. on the field, the sideline guys, and then... Right. See? That... I've been yelled at like that. Haven't you been yelled at like that? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just didn't want to take a timeout in that situation, you know? I mean, short yardage personnel, that should almost be automatic, and he had the wrong grouping in there. For the first time in 28 yard years, Alabama has reached the number one spot. They are undefeated, 9-0, LSU 6-2. We are tied at 21, 123 to go. And Alabama trying to work into position for a winning field goal. Now they only have one.
one time out left. So you're almost, the bet is now that it's going to come down to a field goal. Now, should Les Miles start be thinking that way and start using his timeouts? And as time has been taken, they've reset the game clock to 123. Mm -hmm. It's still, see, Les now has to start thinking, should I use, if a first down happens here, Les has to start thinking, I'd like to have some time on the clock, a la Texas Tech. He doesn't have Graham Harrell and Michael Crabtree. No, but he, time is valuable. You don't want to go. You can't let Alabama kick it with one second to go in the game. You mean like Iowa and Penn State? Right. I'm just trying to it's, connect the dots. You did it good. Third down. Coffee. He's got a first down just inside the 30. You know, Alabama should have hurried to the line of scrimmage and be ready to snap this ball within five or six seconds of the officials' okay to go. Game clock has started again, 1.14 to go. John Parker Wilson inside. Julio Jones, is that who it is? Yes, it is at the 22. That's his sixth catch. And he goes over 100 yards. What kind of game has he had? Wow. Clock still running down. I'm surprised that Les Miles is not taking timeouts. Les has all three. And now here's one. Because you just can't let the game end here. This is a field goal. 53 seconds to go. Time goal. Fifty-three seconds to go. Tiffin the junior. And we mentioned the struggles he's had last game against Kentucky. Missed to the right. He was one for three on field goal attempts. Missed a 34-yarder in the first quarter, a 42-yarder in the fourth quarter. He did make a 24-yarder and Gary earlier today. Yep. Had a miss here. Pulled it to the left. Now, if I was less there. I would have challenged that last play because even if you lost the challenge, you get a timeout, stop the clock because Peterson thought he had that ball. In essence, it's the same thing. You do a coach's challenge, you get a timeout, it's going to cost you a timeout anyway. Ball at the 22. Coffee. I'm telling you that Les wanted a challenge there. That LSU coach is challenging the previous play on the catch. Right. I'm surprised that he didn't make that clear to begin with. That was the strategy. It was easy strategy. So Penn wagers goes into the headset. Remember, Peterson came up with the ball. Julio Jones comes down, his knees down, and then he takes the, well. <laughs> yes. Can't see anything there. Nope. We're not going to be able to see anything here. They're not going to reverse that. Well, I'm telling you. Let me see a few more. Let me see a few more here. It's a big play. <laughs> Catch clearly made, knees down, possession established. Well, how did Patrick Peterson get it in his right hand, though? That's what I'm, I'm confused about. Nothing has shown to overrule After it you, yet. the ruling on the field is confirmed. A catch. Second timeout, charge LSU. And so they, LSU, excuse me, Gary, one left. Wait, did they burn two timeouts on the play? Well, why, why didn't they challenge on the first time out? Oh, Second my. and two. Oh, my. Blitz. Coffee. Caught and dropped. Flag is down. Face mask. I think you're right. Boy, that's a, that's a, that's a big oversight there. Two timeouts for one challenge. Shepard. Personal foul, 
grasping the face mask. Number 11 on the defense. Penalty half the for the goal. First down. What's going to happen now? If Alabama just doesn't push it into the end zone, it's going to be a last-second field goal. There it is. Just enough. You see the official grab the hanky right there. Patrick Peterson, in the meantime, came off injured. Looks like he might have cramps. First down and 10. 33 seconds to go. Coffee. And running back gets it. I'll bet you there's some Alabama fans, and obviously they're going to keep this thing as safe as they can, but who remember that he has coughed it up a couple of times oh, yeah. inside the 10-yard line. They're going to run the ball to the right here, aren't they? Got to center it up. LSU uses its final timeout, and it's taken with 12 seconds remaining. Twenty-one all, top-ranked, undefeated Alabama getting in position to attempt the game-winning field goal. LSU had a 14-play, 74-yard drive in this quarter to tie it up, but Alabama has responded now. It's second down. They have one timeout left. LSU cannot stop the clock. Twelve seconds remaining. Tried to get to the that middle of the awkward. field, and he stumbled. <laughs> Nick Saban will be in control now. He'll get it down to two or three seconds and take a timeout. Three seconds. Now, remember this. Les Miles has used up all his timeouts. He can't freeze the kicker like Nick Saban did in the first half when Colt David missed it. It's going to go as it goes. Nineteen eighty five Van Tiffin kicked a fifty two yarder Alabama beat Auburn now his son with a chance to provide the game winner. This is from twenty nine yards away. Blocked. It is blocked. saying you didn't get enough height on that. I think Derry Beck with number 48 got his hand on that. It might have been Francois. Tough to tell from that angle. Looked like Ricky Jean Francois, number 90. Wow, what a play. That's not enough height, though. I agree with Nick. There wasn't any penetration on that. There was no penetration on that kick at all. It was. It was number 90, Ricky Jean Francois, the MVP of the national championship game a year ago. Les Miles. We are going to overtime. We're tied 21 all. a moment ago. Alabama won the toss. They have elected to begin on defense. And let's go through the overtime rules. Coin toss decides possession. The offense will start at the 25-yard line. Each team will keep the ball until it scores or fails to make a first down. Beginning with the third overtime, teams must attempt a two-point conversion after a touchdown. Well, Gary, 
we have a night game in Tiger State. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I, I still think the Alabama field goal team held up pretty well there. That was too low of a kick. High formation on first down, Jarrett Lee. Scott comes left. Got five, maybe six. Inside the 20. Lyle hit and Quinn Johnson. A 29-yard field goal blocked by Ricky Jean Francois. Prevented the Alabama victory. Richard Murphy is in the lineup now, deep back in the eye. Quinn Johnson, number 45. Yeah, and now here comes the wild, cat again. wild tiger. As Lee is wide right, they shift accordingly. Murphy comes left. Nothing there. Rolando McLean with a tackle. We documented a couple weeks ago doing Alabama that Nick Saban spent two off seasons getting ready for this formation. He said he feels that you have to be multiple against it. You can't just have one defense. He's ready for it. Got the big receivers in. Bird, LaFell, and Tolliver. Third and six. Lee rolls right, pulls up, goes into the end zone. Double coverage for LaFell, and it is intercepted. Yes. Rashad Johnson. Yes. When you sprint out, the safety goes with you. Jared has had three or four interceptions like this. When you sprint, he goes. You're not going to get one-on-one. -on -one. Remember what I said earlier that was a very dangerous throw in that one down the sideline on that sprint out? This was very similar. When you sprint, the safety goes with you. Jarrett Lee never accounted for one of the smartest football players in college football, Rashad Johnson. One-time walk-on from Sullivan, Alabama. His second interception in this ball game. Glenn Coffey is alongside John Parker Wilson. Fourth interception for Lee tonight. John Parker Wilson goes for Julio Jones. Got it. Out of bounds at the three. My gosh, that looked like Harold the Crabtree. Oh, absolutely it did. Back shoulder throw. Throw it at the back shoulder and this, I tell you, Crabtree. John, A.J. Jones. Michael, I mean, these young receivers, watch how well this ball is thrown. Back shoulder. And then the young receiver goes up and snatches it. And holding on for dear life is Peterson. First and goal from the one. You got to stick it in the end zone. You cannot put your field goal kicker out on the field. Boy, do I totally agree. Baron Huber is the fullback, number 40. Coffey is the running back. It's Glenn Coffey coming left and knocked down at the one. Good defense. Drake Nevis, number 92. Now here's the strategy for Alabama. You got one more down to get it in there. Because on third down, you're going to kick it just in case you fumble the snap so you get two tries. So this is the last chance. I would assume you'll get some type of play-action pass here. Second and goal, Huber and Coffey are the running backs. From the eye. Wilson, quarterback sneak. No indication of a touchdown. Oh, they did? Yes! Touchdown! Alabama remains undefeated and still number one. Saw the ball go across. Right there. Look at 
go say yes, yes. Yep. he nodded his head the umpire told because the linesman couldn't see it the umpire says yes i saw it land across the line the ruling on the field stands touchdown game is over for the first time since 1999 Alabama will be in the SEC championship game. They have cinched a spot. They go to 10 and 0 in Nick Saban's second year. Rashad Johnson, two interceptions. Let's go down to Tracy, who's with Nick Saban. Oh, Coach, what a game, one we expected. You win the SEC so early in this season, you remain undefeated. How much does it mean to this program? First time since 99. Well, it's a real tribute to our players, and they've done a great job all year, all offseason. I'm so happy for our fans. Uh, it's great for Alabama, the university. We've had a lot of support there. This is a great football game, and LSU's players deserve a lot of credit. They played a great game today. John Parker Wilson has managed the game for you every game this season. This time, he drove down the field and won it for you. Well, he certainly did. We had an opportunity to win it in regulation, but, you know, that's football, and uh, great play by Rashad Johnson to keep them off the board. So, you know, the turnovers were big at the first, but it's got to be more consistent. You remain undefeated, though. Congratulations. Enjoy well, the win. Thank you. We will. Thank you very much. I am reminded of Nick Saban's comment. When was it when he said, I really am happy. I know I don't look <laughs> it, but I really am happy. Well, he looked it there. Now time for the Direct TV player of the game, Rashad Johnson. One-time walk-on. Now one of the most valued players on this Alabama defense. Two interceptions, one return, returned for a touchdown. That was 54 yards. And he helped seal the victory with the touch, uh, the interception in the end zone. Now time for the Wrangler five-star plays of the game. We're going to give you two of them. First of all, in your mind, think back last Saturday night, Graham Harrell, Michael Crabtree. And this time, it's Julia, Julio Jones from John Parker Wilson. That gave them a first and goal, and here was the touchdown. John Parker Wilson goes in over left guard and leads his team as a senior to Atlanta and the SEC championship. What a throw to the outside with the game on the line. The young quarterback made the mistake. The senior quarterback made the play. You see it in college football all the time. You win with those senior quarterbacks. John Parker Wilson grew up dreaming of playing for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Gary said earlier he needs to put them on his back and lead them to a championship. Turned out he did. Nick Saban's second year. We're going to get to see the Crimson Tide in Atlanta. To be determined will be the SEC team from the East. The final score, 27-21. Alabama comes to Death Valley and goes back to Tuscaloosa with a victory. For Gary Danielson, Drake.